Paul, good morning. Wait, I gotta fix my headset. It's way too loud. Good morning, good afternoon. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today is day two of Cake Pops. Yesterday, I made over a hundred Cake Pops. I think we had a total of like 109. So we put them in the freezer last night. That way they could harden and set. Today, we're gonna be decorating. So that's gonna consist of melting a fuck ton of white chocolate. I have one. Two, three, four, five, six, eleven ounce bags, and then I also bought, I bought four of these, these are one and a half pound blocks of white chocolate. Like, listen, listen. <laughs> they're big, they're big. These were like five bucks each, so I'm minus forty dollars because I went to the shop this morning to buy more chocolate. Because yesterday, I only had three bags, so since I- I don't know how much we're gonna go through- I don't know how much we're gonna go through, but it's gonna be a lot. Hopefully I have enough, and if I have extra, then I- because the shop always runs out of white chocolate, so like when I went- because I went to Safeway this morning, and they had like only eight of these in the store, so I bought half of their inventory, but I went super early at like 8 a.m. right when they opened because, um, one, it snowed last night. So I wanted to go before I was like slipping and sliding and also in the morning is when they stop, right? So that's when shelves are usually empty. That's fine. So I have a lot of white chocolate. So hopefully I have enough. Marcy, my fingers have enough. I also have food coloring. Also, I have a new tweet. Go like it. Go like it. That way everybody knows that we're live. You don't have to retweet it, but go like it. We can keep up for us. You wish. You wish. Welcome in, Ed. Hope you're doing well today. Uh... Yeah, so today we're decorating. Uh, I don't know how long the stream's gonna go for. My goal is four hours. I did prep dinner ahead of time because I made like little pizza roll sandwiches for my sister and the other roommates. So dinner's done for tonight. I don't have to worry about it. Um, so I think I'm gonna dip all the cake pops because I don't know how I do. For oh yeah, because we're doing spring. No, 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 because. I think I'm gonna do drizzle for the small ones and then peppermint for the larger ones because it'll have my surface area. So I kind of want to start off with the baby ones. See how they go because I have more of them. It's your practice. Okay. So when you're melting chocolate, we did do a little mini lesson yesterday. Make sure you're using a ceramic bowl in the microwave. You can do it on a stove top with a double burner, but that's too complicated. So I have this is actually super cute. Because my sister and I went to the mall last weekend. And it's a Hello Kitty themed like ceramic ceramic mug used for ramen. It's really cute. Because I saw it in the shop. Um, and I was like, hey, favorite sister, I think you'd like this. Because I was going to buy it for her, but this was like fucking 20 bucks. So I was like, hey, you, I think you should buy that for yourself. And she's like, yeah, I love it. So nobody tell her that we're using it for chocolate, okay? Nobody snitch. Nobody snitch. Okay, so. As always, I'm going to be working with a mask on and gloves, which I will put on momentarily. I don't know how much chocolate I should melt. Because the strap is you melt the chocolate and then you pour it into like a lined cup. That way you can easily dip the cake pops in. I don't know how much I should melt. I can use these blocks. Those look fun, but those look like they take longer to melt. Okay, no so let's look at the gate pops from last night. I checked them this morning. Now, since we froze them, they're obviously not going to melt today. Like, we need a stay above. Holy moly, look at all of them. And it's nice because they did firm up. Like, they're completely frozen. They're rock solid. How much can it hold? Huh? This? I This is probably like a 16 ounce cup. Okay. Let's get to work. How long do you think this is going to take, guys? I say four hours. Four hours. That's my goal. If we can do it at two, that'd be crazy. Then I'd be actually speedrunning. Oh, because, like, we have to... 
You have to decorate and package today. I just realized. Okay, let's get a mask on. Mask on. Just a reminder, since these cake pops are for a mass amount of people, I will be wearing masks and gloves. So, just to be extra safe as I'm prepping. Dude, my glasses are so dirty. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking about color schemes. Because... Go with just like a regular white cake pop and then do color drizzle. I think I'll do that because that way I can use the leftovers because I don't want to waste too much chocolate. I mean, I have a lot, but I, <laughs> I don't want to waste too much. Okay, let's get started. I need to wash hands or hmm. Because, like, I'm not going to be touching anything directly. Because we formed the cake pops yesterday. Yeah, I'm still gonna put gloves on. Just to be extra safe. Because, like, um, when you're going from food to non food, like, if you're going from washing dishes to touching food directly, you don't have to wash any. So, it's just about touching anything directly, because I'm only gonna be touching the sticks. I don't need to wash hands. If I go from food to non food, I think. So I have to make sure my hands are super dry. You can't mix chocolate with other liquids when you're melting it. It's another reason why you could use a metal spoon. Because wooden spatulas or spoons can trap moisture. Also, my sister tried both cake pops last night. Because I had like scraps. And she said both batches were good. She could not taste the difference between the batch with or without the burnt bits. So, we're good. We're solid. <coughs> but, I read the glove. Start off with a batch of just regular white to see how. Oh fuck! I forgot to look up how to thin it out. Damn it! Cause like, I know you can add oil to the chocolate to make it thinner. Damn! I need to look it up. That's what I forgot to do last night. Sad. How to know when to eat the cake box while you're asleep? Um, because I yelled at everybody to not eat them, obviously. Okay, so it says you can add a little bit of oil as it's melting. Okay, so two teaspoons for every eight ounces. So just a little, little shoot. Okay, so we'll try it with this first batch. If it fucks it, then we don't do it. Now wash hands again. I'm gonna get some water before I get started. Hi, Lemon. Welcome in. My 
hands are so dry from washing my hands so much yesterday. I also bought the cookies for tomorrow's stream because I didn't want to go out tomorrow again. <laughs> I felt so awkward because I only had self checkout open. And you know how when you go to Safeway they have like the member prices? One of the prices didn't register in, in the register. So I was like, I need help. <laughs> it always felt awkward asking for help at self checkout because just in general, I always feel like I'm stealing. I'm gonna put the whole thing in. This is like half the package. Anyway, so I was asking for help, but I felt so bad. The lady was super nice, though. Ooh. Okay, let's hope this works. doesn't work then we're ending stream try and mix it every 15 seconds We wait. Can everybody pee side to spin? Pretend you're <laughs> in their microwave spinning. <laughs> One of my favorite things um, during like Cinderella streams is when she puts on the blender and everybody spins. There's like a four foot spin emote. It's so funny. Okay, it's melting a little bit. guys just just spin all day long that's your guys's goal today spinning it's gonna be doing a lot of melting Sandwiches, so I use like the Hawaiian roll buns, marinara cheese, garlic butter, pepperoni, and then avocado. So that's gonna be our dinner today. Okay, what we have right here is perfect. I think maybe I need to add a bit more oil. But this is definitely thinner than just melting the straight up chocolate. But it's not as thin as I want it to be. So, as you know, chocolate, don't melt it all the way. Wow. Perfect. And since I'm using liquid, Food coloring, we would add the dye now, but we're just gonna try normal.
Yeah, I think I'll add more oil the next batch. Cake pop number one done. Okay, so it's gonna drip down once it sets. <laughs> Okay, th this is gonna go quick. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna do drizzle on the baby ones. Okay, it's kind of hard to get full coverage because I didn't melt enough chocolate. Oh, there we go. Number two. Oh, decorating is so much easier than forming. Put me on this station. Number three. As I'm dipping them, I can see how deformed some of these are. <laughs> Oopsie. You know, I'm an amateur. I'm not a pro yet. Um, would you guys buy my cake pops? Step one. These aren't like fully frozen because I could still like squish them a little bit. But it's fine. Two, why would you not buy them? Would you buy it if it were in the discount section because they were about to about to expire? Would you buy it then? Oh <laughs> wait look. They were touching. Guys, I might get this done in like two hours, no joke. I could- wait. I was gonna say, maybe we could make another batch, like just one more cake. But then we'd have to let it freeze overnight, then we have to do it tomorrow. And I don't want to do it tomorrow. Oh, that- uh oh, that's too much chocolate. We're gonna specifically label these homemade. That way if they're not perfect, it's fine. Like, they know what they're grabbing. like the little drizzle on top you won't be able to see the deformities you know we cover up our mistakes don't acknowledge our wrongdoings as real streamers do I'm putting too much chocolate on them now because they're 
Dripping too much X's. I think I only need to put I think I need to keep some of these in the freezer because like some of them are sticking to the tray so some of the kid pop is like coming off and sticking I lost one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I can salvage it. Oh, this looks really bad. It's so uneven. <laughs> I think this is gonna be the test one. Yeah, because the chocolate in the cup is already hardening. Minus one. Okay, let's get some more started. Now... I don't know if I have to heat it up in like a different container. I think I have to wait until this fully sets again and then it can be remelted. Because I know that um, if it's in this state and you heat it up, it's gonna burn. So I'm gonna get another cup. 
said, this one has a hand. This one's really good. I think the strat of using a mug is the way to go. Add a bit more oil. Okay, let's get to melting. Want the cooking videos? We're only gonna do that when there's like downtime. Right now I'm decorating. Cause today's gonna be very hands on. That one looks so busted. <laughs> first batch looks pretty good. They look like K-pops, right? a bit thinner. This is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna swap gloves because I'm gonna be touching the cake off directly now. It's probably the best way to do it. Okay, I kind of messed this one up. I was twirling it, and I made this weird, like, wave pattern on the chocolate. It was not what I wanted.
the chocolate isn't like covering it as evenly as I want it to. Oh shit. Maybe it's because I'm putting too much on. It's also because this cup is smaller, so I don't have enough space to like roll it. You know what? These are gonna look homemade. We're definitely hitting that demographic. That one came out a lot better. This one's almost fully. Let's do another round because I don't have enough chocolate left in this one.
Two bags now. Game round three. I don't think I melted this chocolate long enough. Oopsie. I feel like it's still too stiff. I'm gonna put it in for 10 seconds after this one. Yeah, because it's not like a smooth. It's already hardening too. Okay, 
Okay, 10 more seconds. I think the action of like spinning it in the cup was also messing with it. Like that one came out really clean. I think the trick is just making sure I have enough chocolate to fully dip it in. Oh no, I clipped one. have to like let it sit here let the excess drip off and then tap and then put it in
Perfect. Finally. I can probably dip one more in here because it's already starting to stiffen up a little bit. I'm improving. Very nice. So we have about 30 on the board. Yeah, so the chocolate from round one is fully set, so I think we can remelt it now. all the way. That's now three bags. this morning. Okay. I'm going through so many spoons. I have to start using forks next. An hour and not bad. Not bad. I think I'm going to get this done in three hours.
Four more days? Yes, four more days. Oh, also, my sister is going to my parents' house on Christmas Eve, not Christmas. So I'm not going to be alone on Christmas. Let's go. seconds then it's time time for what an ad what's this because out of the mic already now because we are an hour in the street time for me to run a few minutes of ads Get us ready for the next batch. So, if you want to avoid those ads, all you gotta do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Get some water, get a snack. We'll see some of you guys in a few. Get boomed. I want to get some water. nice. I'm also going to dry some more spoons. The spoons are going to be a lot easier to clean than forks. Oh, we don't have a pressure cooker. That's an air fryer, but it's broken. You seem to like a lot of Pokemon music. It is pretty nice, but typically game music is royalty free. That's why I can play it on stream. That's the real reason. What happened to playing Christmas music? I was getting tired of it, honestly. I was getting bored. Get back to work now.
You don't get bored of this music? Not really. I mean, because the playlist I have has like 10 one to two hour long comps. And that only loops like once every week. Versus the Christmas playlist with, which will loop every few hours. Get back to work. Perfect. I wish I had more microwave safe bowls. Because doing it in the bowl is so much easier. Oh, you know how we had that spam bot message? The reason why you guys couldn't see it is because it was automatically flagged as a spam account. Because, um, on Twitch, they have suspicious users, and you as a streamer can choose to... If a suspicious user comes in, you can choose to automatically delete their messages or have them screened by a mod. So I have it set to automatically delete. So I could see it, but you guys couldn't. That's why you guys were like, huh? Are those gonna be snowmen? No. We're just doing a drizzle, because we're not gonna be too extra. Actually decorate them like make snowmen or reindeer but I feel like they'd get busted in transit and I just like don't want to do anything too crazy for a first attempt because I'm gonna get overwhelmed because making a hundred is already a lot Nice of her to do.
Okay, I'm putting way too much chocolate on some of these. But I don't know how to not do that. I've also noticed the ones that have more oil in the mixture have like a gloss to them. That's kind of cool. We're about two-thirds of the way done with this first batch. I feel like the soft buttercream sugar cookies at the stores are underrated. Like the ones that taste super plasticky and fake. I personally love them. I think I've mastered the strat. I'll do it closer to the cam so you guys can see. I think that way I get the most like excess from not dripping down later. But I can only really do this technique if I use the bowl. Because I don't have enough like space in the cups. You seem to be doing great. I think they're looking better than the first rounds. And like, we will be covering with like, another layer for decoration, so they'll kind of hide the imperfections. Like, they're definitely looking better. <laughs> Yeah. 
And I personally love when there's a lot of chocolate coating on my cake pop. So if it's a little bit uneven, I personally love it. Because I'm under, I live with the understanding that humans aren't machines. So it's fine if things aren't perfect. But if I'm at the store and I do see a busted ass cake, I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> oh, damn. I clipped. Okay, yeah, this batch is starting to stiffen up a little bit, so I gotta work quick. stick but I think I can salvage it we're good we're saved what sound the sound of the phone it's not that bad Surely I can make scarier sounds. Maybe one or two with this batch. Oh, I lost this one too. Damn it. That's fine. I saved it. I saved it. Can I keep clipping?
Okay, next batch. Okay, I think I'm gonna need to get some more foam because we have another full tray. So I'm gonna get, grab more foam and then we'll start the next batch. I'll be right back. We're gonna go into brief emote only mode. So spam to your heart's content. Because y'all know it's gonna take me a minute to get up the stairs. Yep. So for the bigger ones, I want to sprinkle peppermint on top, so I'll have to crush the peppermints in advance.
These were the little ones? Yeah. <laughs> the big ones are huge. It's gonna be huge. So get ready to make a mess, y'all. So I gotta prep the peppermints. Um, they're all individually wrapped, which I failed to realize. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be torture. <laughs> uh... Okay, they tear easily. Nice. They're super staticky, so they're like sticking to my fingers, look. Very nice. <laughs> Call me sticky fingers. When is not your nice Friday?
Okay, last one. comes the fun part. Now we're going to scratch the game. The bag already busted. I'll, I'm gonna double bag it just to be safe. I'm surprised I want pop ice, probably because I talk about it so much. Are you ready? You we good? I don't want to like pulverize it. I don't want dust. You could use a mallet. That's probably safer and more efficient. But this is more fun. Okay, I think this is good enough. Look at this lovely, <laughs> lovely bag of shards we have. One more time. This smells so good though. Because if I would have breathed that in, I would have suffocated. Okay, so, after we dip, we will sprinkle peppermint on top. <sighs> now time to once again melt. That would make a good clip though. Yeah. Me dying on stream would be an awesome clip. Imagine all the clout. <laughs> Find it landed rim setup. You'd get so many gifted. At my funeral, they list all the gifters' names. Funeral live stream BTOS? I don't know. 
Because you can't show dead people. So I think as long as you don't show, like, the open casket, I think it'd be fine. It would be pretty morbid, though. People have streamed their weddings. But I, I feel, I don't know if Twitch would like somebody streaming their funeral, honestly. Okay, I think I added too much oil to this batch. It's like really liquidy. This is not good. I think I fucked up. And me. All good though, no nerfs, no snitches. I'm doing a great job. I'm looking at some of the cake pops and two of the shells have cracked already. I do not know why that happened. I'm clueless. I got another perfect batch. It was not too oily, it's just because all the oil was at the top. Yeah, guys, keep spinning. Just keep swimming. Oh, I gotta change the I'm gonna need to grab another box of glove because I've already gone through a whole box between yesterday and today. You back to work? We are a little over halfway done. I keep flipping. <laughs> Couldn't imagine using the inferior regular spin. I mean, anybody could use the Meg Hyper Spin. It is free. As long as you have the exclamation extensions in chat. is that the batches with more oil it's not as even of a coat like it's dripping off a lot it looks like it's melting Ding. like you know from um, Wizard of Oz I'm gonna have to clean up the sticks before I package. Okay, 
final five, final five of the baby ones. I wish y'all could see closer, because this one, like, half of the chocolate dripped down the stick. Yeah, I definitely put too much oil in this batch. But it's whatever. Can't all be perfect. Oh no, it's falling out, it's falling out. Frick. What would happen if you took the quiz twice? Then you would automatically be put on the naughty list for the stream. Because you're being annoying. Not gonna lie. Because Maggie Sports is paying millions to have the answers vetted and cleared. And I don't like when you waste my employees' times. Our time. Okay, final one. Done. Uh, stop the timer. 142 for 60. It was 68 K-pops. <laughs> Automatic. Not exactly. You got it right. Now these are two tablespoon K-pops. They are twice as big. And they are fresh out of the freezer, so they are nice and malleable. Or not malleable. Get these. I'm going to be sprinkling peppermint on top. Okay, this one barely fits in the cup. Perfecto, almost. I'm gonna get a plate. We need a plate. The sprinkle on top of that way I could I don't waste. It. Oh, they're dripping. They're dripping off. <laughs> no, they can't use big pieces. Oh, look how cute it is, though. <laughs> Minus the dripped pieces. Ignore it, ignore it. Ignore it. Cute. These are, like, really heavy, though. Very heavy. It's so messy. Okay. I think I'm gonna take out the big pieces. That way I don't grab any. Because the big pieces are too heavy.
I'm gonna try to smash them a little bit more. Yeah, very nice. You know, I think I'm ready. Back to work. Dude, these ones are huge. <laughs> I should have just made baby ones. But you know what? The peppermint does kind of cover up. Where, the, like, the chocolate melts funny. Okay, I also don't have enough, so I'm gonna melt another batch. Go grab more gloves. The peppermint pieces are huge. Yeah, but it's texture. Texture. It does smell good in here, though. You know what else it's almost time for? It's time for me to run some ads, because we are almost two hours into stream, and I don't want to wash my hands again later. So, if you want to avoid the ad, all you gotta do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just $5. Skip your copy and get ad previewing. Also, if you're new here, follow it. Then you get to type in chat. Wow. After that, we're gonna keep working. I think one more hour. Maybe hour and a half tops. Tops. Okay, anyway, we'll see some of you guys in a few. I have a new TikTok. Go like it, go leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. Helps a lot. Get boomed. Already? Yeah. Uh, it's basically two hours. These are looking great so far, though. Let's, let's update Twitter real quick. My Twitter frogs. Let's see what we're doing. Don't leak. Should I put my foot in the picture? <laughs> oh, man. ankles a little bit and I hate it but it's, it happens with all my shoes
time to have a snack, but then we can do a YouTube time for a little bit. Because it's about my lunch time. Are you gonna leave cake pops out for Santa? Um, probably not. Cause you know they already have so many treats already. I don't think they need any more. Maybe if I have some left over, we'll give them to Santa. Welcome in, hon. Thank 
You look nice, thank you. I think pretty decent for a first attempt. Okay, since these are bigger, I'm going to have to over dip it and just tack off, tap off the excess as I go. So these are probably going to take a bit longer to do. But if I fill up the naughty or nice quiz three times, then you get banned. Because it goes good chatter, naughty chatter, banned. He said to gas. Like I said, I don't like when you waste my employees' time. Is there a great chatter? Um, that goes to the top gifter of all time, which is me. So I am the best chatter. Okay, the chocolate already dried. Shit. <laughs> what? Bro, has the chocolate drying already? I was no I I'm still the top gifter I think it's on my panels on desktop I think I think it's still me I know for sure Mac is second It's me, I knew it. I knew it, I knew it. That just shows how 
much of a socialist I am, right? <laughs> Gotta distribute the wealth. Anybody who's subscribed or donated, I genuinely appreciate it. I know it takes a lot to... I know it takes a lot for me to, like, justify donating to somebody. So, I appreciate anything. And if you can't afford to donate, that's no problem. Just chat. I heckin' love chatters. Because chat makes the stream. I'm getting like pink dust on my gloves, so now the sticks are turning pink. That's gonna be a problem. Damn it, foot. Does it still give you money when you gift? Well, kinda. Cause if I spend my own money to gift, right? I lose five bucks, but then I still get whatever normal share I would get from a gifted sub. So I get some money back, but not all of it. <laughs> Which is fine. That's what we call a long-term investment. It's almost time for another batch of chocolate because this one's starting to set too quickly. And one more.
Okay, I don't think I need to add too much oil because since there's leftover chocolate from the previous round, I'll just add like a touch of oil. Oh, I just realized I have to package them today, so it's probably gonna take another hour just to package. Ugh! During packaging, we'll do YouTube time. That's what we'll do. Yeah, we're about a quarter of the way done with the big ones. Probably 30 more seconds.
It's so hard not to like lick the spoon. It's so tempting. Resist the urges. <laughs> I could never be food safe. It is very difficult. But then I think about getting people sick and I get sad. Okay, I gotta change gloves. Okay, this one I have to eat because I fucked up. I touched it with a swapping gloves. Damn it. Minus one. Now one oh eight. That'll be fine. I just feel dumb. That one's for me. I'll dip it at the end, that way it'll cross contaminate. Fuck, I fucked up. See, right at the two hour mark is where I start slipping. Minus one. Put that on the way sheet. Nobody tell the manager. Two tablespoon ones are huge! Holy! It's gonna be huge!
At 20k? Damn! That's pretty good! <laughs> Aren't gonna buy anything? We're gonna keep saving. Yeah, obviously Mac has the most. Because I think out of cumulatively all the channel points earned for the channel, I think Mac earned like a third. But that's because they're here all the time. This one broke too. Fuck. Why do these keep busting? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, stop. Uh. Oh, you want to keep like 20k to baseline? I think that's pretty smart. That way you can get a gift at any time you need it. Good strat. I want to give VIP people their points. I'm so close. Love out, copium. <laughs> One day.
Maybe it's time for another batch. Because this one's already stiffening up. Okay, I'm also gonna crush more peppermint now. Whew. So many cakes, yeah, over 100! I thought I could make 200. I'm crazy. Yeah, I should not use my hand. Sorry, I just realized. Start. Now they're all the right size. Next round of chocolate. Okay, now we're going on to bag number seven. basically every single spoon in the house when we were like silverware shopping my roommates were like oh we'll just need one pack of five are they genuinely dom that's like not even one meal worth of forks so i bought like 20 of each they're actually clueless washing the fucking dishes so they don't know they're just like oh there's always forks in the drawer 
must be magic. Everyone eat from one fork? Yeah. Um. There's D.U.M. <laughs> and what if you drop one? Then you gotta wash it right away. You only have five forks. your hands? Yeah, they could. They could. Not gonna make the same mistake again. Swapping the gloves. Oh no, come on. It fell off. About two thirds done with the large cake pops.
Imagine they all fall. I would be so sad. I would be so sad. <sighs> but, you know, once they're in the package, because I'm going to individually wrap all them, it'll be fine. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. This one ain't sturdy. I can't hear anything. Yeah, try refresh your tab. Or get your ears checked. Both will work. Yeah, Twitch has been really buggy recently. I still get the audio desync when I'm watching streams on mobile a lot and desktop. So I got the yummy hardwire today. So it shouldn't be any issues. You're in bed already? It's only 4 p.m. for you. Huh? Or five, it's almost, it's almost two o'clock for me. Oh, oh shit, I dropped, I'm looking at chat. <laughs> I just spilled a lot of chocolate. I wanna lay down, me too, man, me too. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish my paintings in time for my friends. Cause I ended stream last night, I was so tired. I just watched my sister play video games for like two hours and then went to sleep. You accidentally muted Twitch, Lamau. Good one. <laughs> well, W, good one. I have 17 left. My favorite number. I always get tired during December. Me too. Could be the weather. Yeah, chatters, what is your guys' favorite number? I want to hear you guys' actual thoughts and opinions because I genuinely care about your guys' favorite number. I watch all these, like, tip help videos on TikTok and YouTube. And it's so funny what their tips are. They're like, oh, ask your chat a question. And then they give, like, question suggestions and they're, like, disingenuous as fuck. And it's cringe. Oh, I spilled? I'm good, I missed my shoe. Thank you. 
I'm stretching. Rule 34 on the mouth. <laughs> PG-13 chat, PG-13 chat. After this one, I, ha I have to get more chocolate. I don't have enough in this cup. I don't have a favorite number. Maybe 69. Good one. Only but a goodie. I like number 17. Because back in elementary, you were assigned a number in your classroom. Based on, like, your letter in the alphabet for your last name. And mine, for several years in a row, was 17. Because I'm near the end of the alphabet. And I was like, huh, it can't be a coincidence. It must be fate. Another spill? Gonna have to mop again tonight. Sad day. Yeah, I don't remember my high school login number. Okay, let's get another batch of chocolate started. Seven empty. Holy moly. My second to last spoon. I think we only need like one more round after this one because we have 15 left. these cake pops <laughs> holy moly my sister should pay me for my time even though I offered to do this for her drizzle on the small ones. I mean, that'll be easy, though.
What type of flower is the one in the sink? I think that's a orchid. It's a fake one, though. <laughs> How many gifted suburb bits for you to eat? As many as you possibly can. Well, I kind of need these to give away. So, not this time, but maybe another time. I think a funny stream to do at some point would be every 100 bits I do something. So, it could be like every 100 bits, like, I'll eat a cookie or something. I think that'd be kind of funny. But I'd only do that if I got to a point where... I would get guaranteed donations because I feel bad like farming for some streams because I know not everybody can afford to but if for example if I'm at like partner numbers like if I'm averaging 75 to 100 then you would most likely have guaranteed donators for those type of streams so I wouldn't do a stake like that until I could justify it I guess and not feel guilty Damn it, I touched it! I fucked up again. I'm slipping, I'm slipping. Now we're at 106. I didn't change my gloves, that's why I had to toss it aside. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Actually throwing.
Why do you guys keep hawing me? Did I say something weird? Oh no! Oh no, it fell in, it fell in. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, I think this one's the last cause. Wait, hold. Save, I got it. This one's a bit messy, but you know what? At least it's saved. Oh, it's over. It's gone.
honestly, RP chatters are the best. Because, you know, they know how to keep each other entertained. so bad then get it easy Welcome in, hon. We are almost done decorating. Probably like 15 minutes left. Oh, it's time for me to run an ad. After this uh, round, I'll do an ad. Oopsie. And my K-pop's not makeup. They aren't that hard. I mean, granted, it's probably easier for making just one batch. Not, don't trust you to bake anything? Damn. I guess we're not hiring titans for the sous chef then. What if we did, for the drizzle, like, red, and then the opposite direction, green? I think that would look kind of good. Like a crosshatch. Okay, four more. I probably have enough in here for maybe two more. This one's like perfect. Look at this one.
Can I name it? Sure. These nuts, good one. Classic. Okay, final two. I don't think I have enough chocolate in here. I might. Nah, I don't even have enough for one. Damn. Okay. So it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. But you can avoid the ad by subscribing for four ninety nine. It's five dollars. Skip your coffee, get ad previewing all month long. And if you're new here, follow the channel. You get to type in chat. Wowie. After the ad, we're gonna keep going. We're almost done decorating the larger batch because <laughs> we still need to add decoration to the baby ones. So we are maybe three quarters of the way done decorating. Then we got a package. So we got a long way to go. Target is five hours. I said I could do three, but target is five. Because I forgot packaging. Get boomed, non-subs. How's your sister bringing this? I have like a cardboard box. Sorry, I had to check an email. I'm thinking. Okay, I'm good. Okay, bag number Hopefully this will be our last batch, because I have about half of this, so we only have to dip two more and then drizzle the rest. So I think this hopefully will be our last batch of chocolate because it's also my last spoon. Did I 
miss something? Yeah, everything. You miss the world. Final two. Swap gloves. I remember. That was close. That was way too close. Guys, get ready. For I am here, because we're going to be done very shortly with batch number one. And then finishing batch number two will be easy, because we're just drizzling. Sorry, too soon, yeah. Nice try. spinning because um, I wanted chatters to roleplay like they were in the microwave spinning. <laughs> Final one. Th this one's falling out too. Fuck. I think it's because these were at room temp for a while. Ooh, Eastward! Thank you. 
final peppermint cake pop is complete. We have 49 large ones and then 68 <laughs> baby ones. I'm gonna move these larger ones to that other tray, that way I don't drizzle accidentally. Yeah, batch one complete. Okay. Whoa. But we're not done yet. <laughs> Gotta decorate these ones. They're too plain. These are done. Very right, nice. So I'm gonna divide. I'm gonna divide the remaining warm chocolate into two bags, and then color and dye. I could use pipettes, but you know we're not using the nice bags today. Okay, so we're gonna do green and red. Cause I'm almost out. <laughs> Thank you, Titans. I appreciate that. 400 bits. Thank you. Can we get some whitens in chat? I heard dump when I got scared. <laughs> but thank you, hon. I was like, was that an ass comment? <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. What was I doing? I was dividing. Okay. So I think it would be best if I mix it not in the bag. I can use a fork to mix because I don't have another spoon. I think I have one more spoon, but it's like a specialty spoon. I think this is ample. I gotta go. Okay, no problem. Thank you for hanging out for a little bit, Titans. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Okay, one drop. One singular drop of green. I'll mix this on cam. on the table. Let's do two drops. One, two. <laughs> so much chocolate. I
Let's do the red first, because the red is going to need a lot, because that way it won't be pink. I did five red. You're really going all out? I don't think this is extra enough. I think I could have gone crazier. special teaspoon yeah this isn't red enough people better eat them I know hopefully you can come up with any it's not red enough I need more It takes a lot of food coloring to get the proper saturation because since it's white, it's always going to be a pastel -y color. Yeah, I just put in like six drops of each extra. at least. You know, it's red enough. The red is starting to harden, so I'm gonna do it first. Oh, the red is super hard. Oh, no. Shit. I probably seized it by mixing it too much. Yeah, it's like, it's not even liquid anymore. Fuck. Okay. Oh, it's probably because it went into a cold cup. That was it. Hmm. Well, you have extra chocolate here that's set, so we can get that. Damn it. I can tell from here, yeah, it, it's probably because this was a cold cup, and also I mixed it to... Spread the cold temperature throughout. Yeah, it's it's hard. Damn it. Well, you know the green is still good, so we'll we'll pipe the green first, then make a new batch of chocolate for red. Damn. I don't have any more spoons now. Right. It's fine. We learn from our mistakes. Now you guys at home know what not to do. Smile. Okay, this is a lot of green. <laughs> I wish we could use this for the red, but then you get brown.
Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have piped it over like wax paper. That way I could use the chocolate again. Oh well. <laughs> Duly now. Look at that color difference. Wow, we. I miss the Eastward playthrough. Yeah, I think Eastward is definitely like one of my top three games. And replaying it just made me appreciate it more. Galaxy in months? Um, Shrew. Oopsie. I mean, honestly, I don't like Galaxy that much. Like, it's alright. I think Odyssey is still the best Mario game. lot left over. Now let's make the red. I could probably use the same spoon. This is gonna be for red. So I'm gonna use the same spoon. This is just leftover chocolate from previous rounds, but it's fine because it's fully set. Because that's the glory about chocolate. Once it's fully set, you can always reuse it. It's just you can't like reheat it in the in-between stage. Because that's what can cause it to seize. Or burn. And when it burns, it just won't melt.
go heat. I want to see another direct view. <laughs> You see the new Mario movie. Less in here. Still debating if I want to see the Mario movie in theaters or home. See, I would recommend seeing any movie you can in theaters. Just the audio quality is incomparable to at home. Yeah, I'm gonna rotate this. That way I can do the stripes in the opposite direction and not have to like twist my wrist. weekend but I want to actually enjoy the movie yeah I feel like a lot of kids would go opening weekend and they would just ruin it for sure because I went to GameStop the other day to trade in games right and we went like 30 minutes after open and it was one worker by themselves they were super nice like they were genuinely like Probably, like, the nicest service worker I've ever met. Um. But they were helping this guy. They bought, like, ten games. So, the worker had to pull them up from, like, the back shelves. And then, this family came in. They had a baby and... Four kids. And they were talking so loud! <laughs> and my sister and I were next in line. Because we were going to trade in stuff, right? And I told the mom, I was like, you guys can go in front of us. You guys have kids, it's fine. And she's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Because, <laughs> like, since we were trading in, it took him, like, 15 minutes for him to help us. So I would have felt bad if I would have had to make those kids wait, you know? I can't remember the last time I didn't buy a game digitally. That's kind of how I feel. But like, with the physical games, you can trade them in, which I totally failed to realize. So you kind of only spend about half of what you bought it for. And that's kind of cool if you're able to trade it in. Okay, this red isn't as bright as I thought it'd be. But we're gonna pretend. Oh no, there's a clump. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, why is it clumping? Uh-oh. Okay, we're good? 
I thought it was already like stiffening in the bag and it's like no way these would look so much better if the red went on first honestly another clump it looks like orange I know I didn't add enough dye Maybe we'll just cross our fingers that all the workers are like red green colorblind, so they can't even tell it's colored. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, oh, dude. Oh, that. I put too much on. <laughs> I'll, I'll show it on cam once I'm done, but that one looks so wild. What music is this? This is the music that plays when an enemy comes out, or a villain. Like the mayor. Oh, this is eastward. I swear the music always change when you look at my message. It's because I wait a little bit of time before I read chat. That way it makes you guys talk more. Easy. Okay, final one. Get ready to spam. I was here. I was here. And we're done, baby. We're done. Thank God. Okay, let's get some close-ups of these babies. Let's get the most perfect looking ones. Busted one? <laughs> oh, this one's cracking. Fuck. Probably because I had too much chocolate on it. This one had too much chocolate on it. I tried to put hair on it. Do you like squiggly hair? Okay. Picked up. Fuck. Cake pops are complete. Three hours and 40 minutes. So probably only. Like three hours and 30 minutes of actual prep. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. We're going to move these to the side. We're going to clean up a bit. I'm going to have a snack. So, don't worry, stream's not over yet, because we still have the package. Holy. Okay. So, what should I do? I'll put a video on for you guys. Because you guys have ADD brain.
They have 10 videos, no way. Hey everybody, my name's Neil Stonic. I'm the editor of Basically a Bun. Okay, so this one's chicken. Dude, look at all these, holy, oh my god. <laughs> okay, let me get the video on screen. Not gonna lie, I fell asleep. I'm glad I bore you. <laughs> oh, where's the video? Oh, there it is. Appetit, and this, okay, this is, is every almost way to every cook way chicken, to cook chicken breast. breast. This, my friends, is a chicken breast. There are two of them on every chicken. It's lean, mostly protein, a little bit of fat. We're going to take these time. chicken breasts and cook them in as many ways yeah, as I need anything to sit down. so you can see the process and the end result. Up first, baked chicken breast. There's nothing that sounds quite as boring as a baked chicken breast, but we're going to do it anyway. Sling it in there at 350 degrees for 22 to 25 minutes. Look at that, mm, yeah, definitely cooked. So as expected, this is a pretty unappetizing looking piece of protein. Normally you're baking something for a slightly longer period of time versus trying to blast it with intense high heat. That kind of heat just has more of a tendency to dry out a lean cut I gotta like get this, a good angle. So you won't get a lot of color on it. Baking is not really a term that I would use in conjunction with meat generally. Roasted chicken breast. Okay, so baking was a little bit of a bust, but we're gonna roast it now, which is just baking at a higher heat. Raise the heat to 425 degrees, and this is gonna go for a shorter period of time. 18, oh my God, just sit down. Right, it didn't really brown Holy. as much as we were hoping. I don't know if that temperature was high enough to get exactly what we want, but it looks a lot better than baked. It would definitely be a different story if we had some skin on there, which could really take on some color and get crispy and delicious. But yeah, it's nicely cooked, nothing to write home about, but there's also nothing wrong with it. Broiled chicken breast. So we're not quite done with the oven. We're gonna put the food very close to the heating element, get that as hot as we can possibly get it, and see what happens. Normally this is a technique that we'd use just for finishing food, not the whole cooking process. All right, doesn't look too bad. See, there's some nice browning that we didn't get from the last two. We got some color on the bottom, which is kind of surprising, actually. That is pretty much a perfectly cooked chicken breast, I gotta say. The grain is nice and tight without being super cinched up. It's nice and juicy. It's slicing nicely. So if you're gonna cook chicken in the oven, this is not a bad way to do it. You know what sounds unappetizing? Boiled chicken breast. We're just gonna crank Ew. the heat, get this water boiling, add a little salt to it, because we're not monsters, and then we're just gonna drop this chicken breast straight in there. The thing is, as muscle fibers My cook, hands are so fucking and dry. Up, and then any kind of fat or juiciness in between them. I have a new tweet, no tweet, go like it, please, go like it. In this case, getting pushed out new into tweet. the water. So you're probably actually gonna end up with better tasting water than you are chicken at the end of the day. Lamau. This one has zero color and you tweak is like it. incredibly unappealing looking. This is not a way to cook chicken. Poached chicken breast. This water is at room temperature now and we're gonna raise the heat over time with the chicken breast in it, which is going to cook it a little bit more gently than the boiling method. We kind of overcooked this. It's still really shrunk up and seized up, which is how you know that a lot of the juice has escaped, but at least it's gonna have some of the I just realized I didn't take any pictures from yesterday. Leaf, the garlic, you know, all in all, not a terrible way to cook a Sad. chicken breast. Because I wanted to post like a, a progress a cooking something thread on Twitter once it was done. A flavorful liquid. So but the I first didn't thing take any pictures from yesterday. It, you know, maybe five to eight minutes total right. just to get some color on the outside. Now we're going to add some onions, carrots, celery, a little bit of garlic. Once you see those brown bits, we're going to add some wine and nestle our chicken breast yeah, right in there and bring it all up to a boil and cover it for 15 minutes. Well, it definitely that didn't smells great. It's kind of weird to serve it without those veggies, but we're just evaluating the chicken breast. Braising is something something you would normally do for tougher cuts of meat. Things that have more connective tissue and fat to render out and break down. Not normally how you'd cook something like a chicken breast, which is like a lean, quick cooking protein. But you know, it's actually pretty good. You can taste the onion, taste the carrot, taste a little bit of the wine. Not the best way to cook a chicken breast, but not bad. Milk braised chicken breast. This is kind of a cool method. We're gonna braise the chicken in milk, then add lemon zest, making a sauce that's kind of halfway. This and is half what I made, birds. but in the oven. We're gonna the drop other day. in sage, lemon peel, garlic cloves, and a cinnamon stick. Then we're gonna pour our whole milk all over that, let it come up to a boil, and then drop that temperature down. Let it simmer for 20 to 25 minutes on the lowest possible heat, and voila, chicken cooked in milk. It really looks and feels a lot like the braised chicken that we already had, but it's perfectly cooked inside and it's got some of that dairy richness and the aroma of the sage and the garlic. 
This is probably one of the most delicious ones that we've had so far. Steamed okay. chicken. That method is really good. Instead of submerging the chicken in water, we're gonna let the water boil underneath and the steam come up. You got no color, but at least it does feel pretty juicy and we've got some nice even cooking. Microwave time. Pop it in there, make sure the microwave is set on high for three minutes and see what happens on the other side. This is Ew. definitely the least appealing chicken breast we've cooked so far. Some might even call it corpse-like. Ugh. <laughs> Rotisserie chicken. Corpse husband? Breast. All right, we're gonna, um, okay, uh, just get it, I'm just gonna get it hooked on there. And around and around she goes. This is not a good idea. Cutting into it, it looks really dry and mealy, rotisserie, no bueno. All right, so we're gonna play around with the deep fryer now. We've got our neutral oil at 350 degrees. Uh, and then we're just gonna drop our naked chicken breast in. Definitely wanna use a neutral oil here, something with a high smoke point. The thing that's cool about deep frying something is that the heat is super direct and it's all around the chicken at the same time. The oil is heating and driving moisture out of the chicken at a super consistent rate. Okay, it's not looking so bad. It's got a lot of color on it, but I'm a little worried that the exterior is kind of crusty, uh, not in a good way. It's actually fairly moist, not mad at it. But this would definitely be even better if we, say, coated the breast in a tempura batter. The coating protects the chicken and provides a shell that's going to trap the steam and juices inside. We're going to come back in about 12 minutes and see what our chicken looks like, making sure that we flip it halfway through because it's not fully submerged. That's like a perfect medium well. It's got that cool kind of crackly exterior. You've got that crispy crust, very juicy looking inside. That's perfect. This is a pretty great way of cooking a chicken breast. Okay, so this is more of a country fried chicken breast. Get it in this seasoned flour, then into some beaten egg, and then we're gonna put it back in the flour so you can develop like a nice thick coating. We're gonna get that in 350 degree oil for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we're gonna turn it after about five minutes. Okay, there is no possible way that you can look at this country fried chicken breast and not think it looks delicious. Got a ton of texture, it's crispy, it smells great. It's nice and juicy on the inside, and because we weren't directly exposing the meat to heat, you don't dry it out. Instead, it's got this protective, delicious, edible shell, kind of like we did with the tempura. My name is Emil, and I endorse this method. Seared chicken breast. All right, I'm just gonna get this pan real hot, a little olive oil in there, salt on the chicken, and slap it in. Chicken breast works better with gentle cooking methods, but the payoff will be that we can manage to get the exterior nice and crusty, uh, then we can keep it juicy and tender on the inside. This seared chicken breast definitely has more color on the outside than previous iterations, but we may have actually burned it a bit on this side. Feels tender. It's got a little bit of pink on the inside, so this is definitely gonna be one of the juicier, tastier ones. Next up, we've got the old college dorm room delight, the George Foreman Grill. We're gonna slap it on here, and it's gonna make sure that there's kind of a direct heat on all parts of the chicken. This will probably go for about 10 minutes. So look, I mean, this has got those grill marks that you see like in a commercial chicken breast. This actually might be a great method for cooking chicken because you've got that nice direct but moderate heat on both sides. You've got some browning, the inside is nice and juicy. Really yeah. not a bad way to I'm cook chicken I'm gonna move the cake box to this side of the table. Hot salt block cooked That way when I breast. eat, I'm not facing Here we it. got a pink Himalayan salt block ripping hot. It's kind of like a cast iron. Just kind of a silly way to cook a chicken breast. I feel like there are probably other things that the salt block is better for, but at least the flavor is spot on. Chicken breast under a brick we have this preheated brick that we're gonna plop right on top. You know, it actually looks pretty good inside, nice and moist, and that exterior, it might be a little bit leathery, but it definitely cooked quickly, and we got good color on one side at least. Ironed chicken breast? Ew. Say you're in a hotel room, wanna cook some chicken breast, you've got an iron. You know, it's actually, it's not that bad. You've got nice sear and color. I don't know that I would fully endorse the iron as a method for cooking chicken breast, but it's not the worst thing that you could do air fried chicken breast. So what you're looking at right now is an air fryer. It's a kind of gadget. It circulates air around with a fan to try and mimic the deep frying process. All right, so we're gonna set this to 390 degrees and we're gonna let it go for about 13 minutes. And yeah, that looks like a cooked chicken breast, all right. You know, and it feels pretty good. We've got these uh, kind of spots on it, which I guess could pass for- Can we like look at all these? Isn't that wonderful? One would say beautiful. What? Why are you hugging me? I'm like reveling in my hard work. 
Jeez, are you mad that I didn't play the video? For some kind of browning or coloring. The inside's looking pretty okay. Gorgeous, bit thank you. leathery, but on the Where's whole, this the gets bod? a passing grade, but like what? a C, not like a B plus. Is it not Everybody published? loves That's an Instant weird. Pot. It's basically just a pressure cooker with a lot more buttons on it. We're just gonna throw the chicken breast in there with a little bit of water, some salt. There we go, 10 minutes. It's really nothing to write home about, but it was cooked with pressurized steam instead of regular steam. When you have it in that steamed pot, you can't really check on it, which is a bummer. This method really works a lot better for fattier meats or things that want to slow the burn. The bot is I'm there, you're really lying. Slow cooked chicken breast. You're the lying. The whole idea behind a slow cooker is that it maintains a low heat for a long- Why would you lie? My VODs are always published. You're lying. Where's the VOD? What? What? What are you talking about? I got scared. Because the only time that Twitch will unpublish your VOD during a live is if you get copyrighted. I was talking about the one of the screen. Oh. Dude, you scared me. So this is just... If you search Bon Appetit on YouTube, then you'll find their channel. Right here. Right there. Uh, dude, I thought I thought I got clapped. I was like, I didn't do anything bad. Okay. I'm gonna eat my lunch now. Long period of time. We're gonna add some celery and carrot. We're just gonna add a little bit of sweetness, some parsley. We're gonna pop that lid on, and we're gonna cook it on low heat for two to three hours. This is a chicken thigh that's gonna be falling apart, juicy, tender, but instead it's falling apart, dry AF, and doesn't have AF. that much going on. Maybe if you're <laughs> a kind of person who likes dry, shredded chicken tacos, this would be a great way to cook chicken. But if you like food, this is a bad way to cook chicken. So here if we have like a food. Romartopf. It's a German clay pot. We're gonna put the chicken and some aromatics and a little bit of liquid in here. And then we're gonna put it in the oven and let the temperature slowly come up. It'll be that nice, even heat over the course of 45 minutes. All right, so after all that, the clay pot chicken breast looks pretty much the same as the poached and steamed and boiled. I'm gonna wash One my thing hands. that's hard is we weren't able to really <laughs> monitor what's going on, so you just kind of set it and hope that it's done at the end. This actually looks a little bit dry and overcooked, but at least it smells nice, so that's something. Sous vide chicken breast. Sous vide literally means under a vacuum. This device is called an immersion circulator and it's gonna keep that water at a consistent 150 degrees. You're gonna seal your chicken breast in an airtight pouch and let it sit until the chicken comes up to temp about three hours. There's absolutely no chance of overcooking because the water is gonna stay at that same temperature the entire time. Dude, three All right, hours? chicken sous vide. It looks pretty much the same as the other moist cooking methods, but it feels extremely tender. It's I need water like too. perfectly cooked, but kind of in a spooky, ghost-like way, which is why people tend to sear things after they've cooked them sous vide. It may not be exciting, but you're gonna nail it every time. Okay, so we're gonna use this gadget called a searzol. It's really a diffuser that you attach to a regular camping torch, so you're not hitting food with a direct jet of flame. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. Normally you'd use a searzol to brown something that had already been cooked, but here we're gonna try to use it to actually cook this chicken breast all the way through. That char is definitely more on the burnt side than the brown side. It's not got that caramelized flavor that we're looking for, and it's definitely a little bit over. This method is super hard to control, so I don't know that I would recommend it. Three hours isn't too bad, but still three hours Look, for chicken? I've never dehydrated too a chicken long. breast before, but the idea is, all right, you've got this dehydrator. It's just a box with a fan, and it's got a small heating unit. But you know what isn't long? An ad break, because guys, we are three hours into stream, four hours, oopsie. So it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad reviewing all month long, or... You can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have a Prime available after the ad. Gonna take a break, gonna eat my lunch, and then we're gonna package the cake pops. So if you don't wanna miss a single second, subscribe. And if you're new here, follow the channel. You can type in chat while we eat. In it, so you can set it to an extremely low temperature. We're gonna put the chicken breast in, and then we're gonna leave it for 24 hours and come back, and hopefully that will slowly drive out the moisture. That does not look like food. That is not food. <laughs> that was chicken, and now it is a piece of wood. Or a rock. Don't really think that anybody should eat this, and I actually don't know if there is a way to eat it. This is inedible. Do not do this.
Now, en papillote. So we have this nice little heart-shaped parchment situation. We're gonna get that chicken breast in there and hit it with a little bit of salt, some aromatics, just some lemon and thyme. And we add a splash of wine so it kind of steams and puffs up in this little parchment paper pocket. Uh, we're gonna cook this bad boy at 350 yeah, degrees sprouted. for about 28 minutes until the packet kind of puffs up a little bit and we can just see a little bit of steam escaping. And it's puffed. We got a puffed papillote. It smells really good. Super lemony and kind of herbaceous. This has promise. Those aromatics didn't have a whole lot of time to penetrate, but definitely a cooking method that lends some flavor to the meat. All right, more French. Poulet au pain. I don't know, chicken and bread, I think. We got some puff pastry here. We're gonna put the chicken breast in there and make a little chicken pop tart. Crimp the edges with a fork so it stays nice and tight. Brush it with a little bit of egg wash so it gets nice and glossy. And once it's sealed, we're gonna pop it into a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes. Mmm, chicken hot pocket. It's nice and brown, smells real buttery. It actually looks like the bottom puff pastry absorbed a little bit of that chicken liquid. So it's not quite as cooked as we might want it to be, but it did trap the heat in. What's not to like? This is a good way to eat chicken. Salt baked chicken breast. This is just salt that's been mixed with beaten egg whites to kind of the consistency of wet sand. We're gonna pack the chicken breast in it, pop it in a 400 degree oven for about 40 minutes. At this point, you can definitely see that there's kind of more browning around the edges where there isn't chicken. So this method is definitely better for a skin on piece of chicken. That salt kind of drew some of the moisture actually out of the exterior. This isn't awful, but it's definitely a little bit overcooked. And the saving grace of this method may just be that the chicken is very well seasoned, even if it is dry. Ah, the great outdoors. Propane grill. We've got these grates preheated over medium high heat and we're just gonna set the chicken breast straight down there. The thing about a propane grill is that it's super convenient. You don't have to wait for it to get going. You tend to get these grill marks that kind of make it look like a TV commercial, but we don't get the kind of like even all over caramelization. Um, pizza pockets with ranch. Charcoal grill, but it's juicy, it's tender, I'm it's muted tasty. right now because at the end of the day, it's I'm a I'm sitting breast. close enough to Cooked my outside. mic to where you can hear me chewing. Smoked chicken breast. So unless right, you guys want ASMR, I'm gonna mute for a little bit. I'll still unmute to talk. For an you guys hour talk, and a half but to two hours. I'm halfway right, done let's eating. Let's unlock this thing, and the chicken definitely has gotten a lot darker. It smells like smoked food. Uh, you can already tell cutting into it that it's a little bit on the dry side, a little bit tough. I think this would have been really delicious if it was a bigger chicken breast or a bone-in chicken breast. Cooked this way, it's a bit dry on the outside, but the flavor is really delicious and smoky. Cold cooked chicken breast. Okay, so we got our charcoal grill going. We've got chicken, we've got tin foil. We're gonna wrap it up. Some people might call this a hobo pack. Some people might call it a steamboat. But the idea here is that we're gonna seal it and we're putting it directly on the coals. So you've kind of got the direct heat on one side, but then the chicken juices are steaming and creating a moist, hot environment that will eventually cook the chicken. It's up to temp and it's almost got a little bit of browning on the bottom side where it was in contact with the coals. If you were camping, this wouldn't be a horrible way to cook it, but you probably wanna incorporate some aromatics into the situation. What could be better than cooking chicken outside? Campfire cooked chicken breast. Boy Scout style, just above the flames, kind of like you're cooking a marshmallow. Turn it around like a hot doggy. It's kind of like a chicken lollipop. All right, chicken a la stick. I did us thought it was a frog at first, it like the way it's shaped. Nice color on it. Doesn't it kind of look like a body? Stick here, okay. It actually looks nice and juicy. Just a little bit of pink in there. Got that nice band of smoke around the edges. Let's see how this tastes. It has a nice kind of smoky wood roasted flavor. This actually may be one of the best methods we've done yet. All right, a few takeaways. One, the boneless skinless chicken breast is kind of always going to be at a disadvantage for direct heat cooking methods because you don't have any skin or bone or any kind of insulation. You guys are so Two, dumb. Because chicken breast is super the lean. weird pork bitch It doesn't pork? love the super yeah, and low and slow method. Yeah, and I guess it's so funny. But low <laughs> is a good way to go. And three, chicken breast is always kind of going to be a point. I don't know what it's called, but you use it to like, it, it holds the meat when you cut it easier. It, whether that's in the form of aromatics in a braising liquid or some kind of marinade glaze. <laughs> And that's it. That's almost every way to cook a chicken breast. I personally cannot look at another chicken breast for another year or so. So if you come up with a better way, you can just go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'll find it eventually. Hey everybody, this is Emil Stonic, editor for Basically at Bon Appetit. And this is almost every
Hi, I'm Emil Stanek, editor-at-large at Bon Appetit, and this is Almost Every Way to Cook a Potato. All right, today we're going to cook a whole lot of potatoes. There are hundreds of varieties of so potatoes. So I just realized I was muted. When we talk about potatoes, the primary distinction There's we like make is between wax... There's like 10 of these series, 10 videos in the series, and I'm just going to do them in order that way I don't skip around. ...potatoes and floury potatoes, and this is what we're going to be working with today, the good old-fashioned russet potato. It falls into the floury camp, and it's super versatile. You can get them everywhere, and we're going to see how many different ways we can cook it. Raw potato. This is a russet like we talked about, so it's floury, high in starch, low in moisture, which means it's a really good storage potato. As you can see, it's still got its skin on it, which is thick and tough and kind of leathery. When you remove that peel, the flesh is a nice, even white. It's very, very firm to the touch, very dense. We're going to just try to eat it like an apple, see what happens. Oh my god, that is not good. It's incredibly crunchy, really kind of dirty tasting, really unpleasant. I do not recommend. Juiced potato. Here we have a juicer, we have a potato. We're gonna turn that juicer on and make potato juice. Well, that is a tall glass of potato juice. We're gonna give it a quick stir to incorporate it. It's supposed to be really high in vitamin B. Bottoms up. Oh, no, it's so, so dirty tasting. I don't care how good this is for my hair and nails. I do not wanna drink potato juice. This is gross. Baked potato. First things first, we're gonna take a fork and we're just gonna create some little holes for the steam to escape from. Then we're gonna drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil, hit it with some salt, and bake it directly on an oven rack at 350 degrees for 60 to 75 minutes. There's our beautiful, handsome baked potato boy. So one thing that I notice here is that the skin is nice and taut and almost a little bit crispy, and that's thanks to that oil. And the inside is nice and steamy. Mm. It's very creamy, very tasty. This is kind of a blank canvas. It's nicely cooked, but doesn't have that much going on. I don't on like potatoes own. that much. Or Twice baked, baked potatoes, potato. sorry. We got a baked potato. And now Hi, we're going to bake it in. again. We're going to cut it open. And then we're going to scoop we're the flesh a break. the We're going to start packaging. Taking care not to mess up the skin. In like we're five minutes. mash that up with a pinch of salt and some melted butter. In. And then we're going to pack those mashed potatoes into don't just one beautiful? half. And pop it in a 450 degree we oven have 106. for 20 to 25 minutes. I think Honestly, they're beautiful. A lot of potato cooking is just kind of about novelty, but this is pretty cool looking. Mm, the outside of the mash part is lightly browned, not crisp, but great flavor, and the skin is um, not quite as caramelized as I'd like it to be. At but this work is definitely a delicious Friday. way to cook a potato. So salt it's for that. Potato. In this method, we're going to use Send them salt to me. as a I wish. First, we're the issue take with cake pops salt, in the mail and make a nice little bed is that for they're going to melt. Nestle it in and then so totally cover it. Then we're going to pop it into a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. But if there's right, ever like an Emmy first. and Peace and Crossover, we have very, to do baking dry, together. But it's That'd not be really fun. crisp. Breaking into you it, can the do it in the Meg Esports cooked. kitchen. You know, it's not bad, but surprisingly, <laughs> none of the salt penetrated it at all. So it's <clears> fine, but maybe a waste of salt. Roasted potato. So here we have a couple of potatoes that we've peeled. We cut them in half, and we toss them with a little bit of olive oil and salt. And we're going to roast these really simply in a 425 degree oven for 45 to 50 minutes. So these were totally raw when they went into the oven. We've got some good browning where there was contact with the sheet pan, but the rest is kind of meh. There's almost a skin that's meh. formed around the outside. It's not bad. The inside is fluffy and tender, but the outside isn't very crispy. I think we can do better. Damn. Boiled and roasted potatoes. Those look so Let's promising. Let's try this again. Same potatoes as last time, but these we boiled in salted water first. They already have a little bit more texture on the it outside seems like so and they're much fully work, cooked. Though. So we're basically just crisping these in the oven. Wow, these look Dude, amazing. Those look so There's good. way more color and it's way more uniform. That's because these were already fully cooked when they went into the oven, so they didn't steam as much, which prevents huh. caramelization. Mmm, these are delicious. Super well seasoned, oh extremely crunchy, great potato flavor. This is a fantastic way to roast a potato. Very nice. Scalloped potatoes. So we're gonna cut Okay, I can never really make scalloped potatoes correctly. And then layer them into this buttered baking dish with some cream, a little bit they of butter. They always come out wrong. And those are gonna bake at 400 degrees for 60 minutes to produce a nice, rich, scoopable side dish. Or it could be because our These oven is fucked at home. amazing. You've got a little bit of browning just at the parts that were exposed either to the hot sides of the pan or the heat I've of the oven. I've never had them good. Everything See, me and potato have nicely. the same problem. Mm. That's delicious. Cooking them in a fatty, dairy-based medium produce a nice contrast to the starchiness of the potato. Hmm. En papillote. So now we're going to cook potatoes in a method called en papillote, which is a French term that means in parchment. We're going to take our thinly sliced potatoes, put them in the middle of our parchment, olive oil, salt. Okay, two more methods, nice and then we're going to go package. And then we're going to pop that in a 400 degree oven Oh, wait, I did. I was, oh, wait, pause, pause, pause. 
Okay, so you can see that the- When I'm packaging, do you want me to keep the video playing? Type 1 if you want me to do that. Because packaging isn't going to be, like, as engaging as, like, actual baking. Should I keep the video playing as I package? <laughs> guys are both like, please, I want to watch the video. <laughs> okay, I think I'll keep it playing. Yeah, I love potato too. Potatoes, not the chatter. Fuck. I don't love anybody. Love ain't real. Okay, okay. Well, I'll I'll watch one more method and then I'll start packaging. Situation. They didn't take on any color. I think packaging is going to take about an hour. They're tasty, but it's pretty much just a steamed potato. This would be much more delicious if there were other seasonings in there that could kind of lend It sounded some real to, to me. Potatoes. Don't clip it. Don't clip Castleback it. Potato. We're going to take a peeled potato and we're going to take a very sharp knife and we're going to make thin slices all down the potato about an Wait, eighth I've of seen an inch apart to create layers that I see will all, all over crisp TikTok. up individually. We're going to salt it, brush it with a little bit of melted butter, and put it in a 400 degree oven for 40 to 50 minutes. But I see this people doing cool. it like their air fryer. It looks like you took potato chips and then stuck them together and then... Mm, that's not really what it's like at all. The edges are brown, but they're not crispy. Oh, Honestly, is it bad? this is probably cooler looking than it is tasting. Oh, not my shit. favorite way to cook a potato. I got scammed. Steamed potato. Okay, last one, last one. We're going to drop this back to work. right into the steamer basket, close the lid, and walk away. There's really nothing remarkable about this from the outside. It's nicely cooked, but there's no salt at all. And that's just not how steaming works. It's not bad, but it isn't bringing much to the table. <clears throat> Ironed potato. Okay, back to work. We're going to put the potatoes in over. a foil pouch with a little olive oil and salt, and so then just go to town with this hot iron. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on inside. Mm. Okay, so. Taking my break. Taking my Union 10. So. I have successfully made 106 cake pops, minus two, because I fucked up the gloves. Now we're going to package. So, I bought cake pop kits that had sticks, ties, and then bags. Yeah, the bags are big enough. So, I don't know what is the most efficient way. <clears throat> But I don't know. Let's... Wait, should I get a speed run timer? I want to do a speed run timer. <laughs> okay, wait. I gotta capture it. Oh, hold. I have to hide that. <laughs> I'm excited. I think I can get it done in an hour. So let me get a timer. <clears throat> Oh, I forgot how to crop for a second. Hold on. Also, pro tip, if you're streaming and you have your bookmarks bar, like, visible, change the bookmark title. Like, if it says email and it has your email address, change the title. Easy. Is that gold to cover it? <laughs> yes, gold ties. <laughs> okay, shit. Oh, what the fuck? Why isn't it capturing? What the fuck? Okay, well, screw the timer. We'll just... We'll just keep an eye on watch time. <laughs> it's not... It's not capturing the window. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, big brain, yeah. Because when you're streaming, you have to do your best to, like, not fucking leak shit. Because, like... For example, if I leaked my email address, then I'd have to l delete the whole bot, and it's ruining it for everybody. So I have my whole setup arranged to where I minimize leaks. Very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna start packaging. All you little iPad kids, I'll put the video back on. <laughs> Meg Millionaire is real. No, it's fake. It's fake news. Yeah, those are not fully okay, cooked. Okay, back to work. I would not recommend this method. 
instant <laughs> pot potato. Potato goes in, add some water to create steam, seal it up, and let her rip for 15 I do that minutes too. on high. Now but we're gonna depressurize, um, and there's our potato. Just to like Let's be, be honest. transparent, so like if you even if you have a sub browser, it still like remembers like your emails or your addresses based on cookies. So sometimes if you open a new tab to a new website, it might show it as an autofill, so be careful. Um, what I would recommend if you're streaming and you're doing like searches, I would do like an in incognito tab just to be extra safe. Sorry, you can't even see me. The video blocked my face. Okay. It's 17 degrees out and snowing. Dude, I would die. In game. Okay, I think I'm ready to start now. No more dilly dallying. It's totally fine. It's totally cooked, but it seems like a whole lot of hassle when you could just as easily bake it. Boiled potatoes. All right, we're gonna try out three slightly different ways of boiling potatoes. We've got one whole potato. We've got another whole potato. And here we also have some peeled and now. cubed potatoes. So this first potato went into salted water that was already boiling. These other potatoes went into salted cold water and we're gonna bring them up to mm. a simmer. These are all gonna take different amounts of time to cook and are gonna cook really differently. A good way to tell if a boiled potato a is table done here. is if you can insert a sharp knife into it and meet no resistance. So this is the potato we dropped directly into boiling salted water. As you can see, the potato started to break apart some, and that's finger. because when you put something this big and dense in already boiling water, Sad. it's cooking from the outside in. Mm, but it's, it's definitely fully cooked, but this middle part has cooked a lot less than this exterior here, not ideal. So this is the potato that we started in cold water and slowly brought up to a boil. No bursting, no exploding, and that's because the potato was given a chance to come up to temperature along with the water. You can see here the center part's nice and tender, and it's pretty much the same texture throughout. Mmm, it's very creamy, has a nice density to it. It still wants some salt, butter, a lot of things, but this is definitely the most effective way to boil a potato that is ready for further embellishment later on. Finally, here we have potatoes that we peeled, cut into pieces, put into cold salted water, and brought up to a boil from there. They look nice and evenly cooked. Mmm. Since we peeled the potato, Yummy. the salt that was in the boiling water was able to work its way into the potato and season it a lot better than the other methods. In the end though, if I'm gonna make mashed potatoes, I want a whole potato that's been brought up from cold. Hand mashed potatoes. Now we're gonna try a few different ways of mashing potatoes. Dude, mashed and potatoes in each case, we're gonna start with potatoes that we boiled world. using the up from cold method. Since we cooked them with their the skin on, we're just gonna wait until they're cool enough to okay, handle, and then the skin will just start to slip <laughs> off nice and easy, easy, just like that. All right, when most people think about mashing potatoes, they think of using a potato masher. So they use something like this, or like this. Not this. This, I guess. Nope. Yeah, that'll work. At this point, I'm gonna start adding some hot butter I and milk, a pinch of salt, keep on mashing until <laughs> we get something relatively uniform. So our hand mashed potatoes are mostly incorporated, but still a Back little bit factories. chunky. The flavor's good, but overall the texture is kind of dense. It's a bit rough, but it's a nice rustic mashed potato preparation. Riced mashed potatoes. Now we're gonna make mashed potatoes with a ricer. We're gonna load the pieces of cooked, peeled potato into it, squeeze the handle, and these tiny little pieces of potato are gonna come out. Then we're gonna stir in some liquid fat, and there you have rice mashed potatoes. Even made so beef with scratch the ricer, You start off with much <laughs> smaller pieces of potato, and it's a lot smoother and more uniform. It's easier to incorporate the fat. Mmm, really, really creamy. This is more of your restaurant style mashed potatoes. It's just a little bit more elegant. Stand mixer mashed potatoes. We mashed them with a masher, we mashed them with a ricer. Now we're gonna try using a stand mixer with a paddle attachment to just see what happens. So these potatoes got all kinds of blunt force trauma. It has almost a dough-like consistency, which is what happens Number when potatoes one. get overworked. Ugh, yuck, it's <clears throat> really gummy, and you still have some chunks of unincorporated potato in there. Huge bummer. Food processor mashed potatoes. We're gonna try this with a Cuisinart food processor. We're gonna take the top Hashtag off, cut our potato into pieces, put that in. <laughs> Why do you say the brand name? And some hot fat, and wow. There you have it, some food processor mashed potatoes. So these look really similar to the ones we made with the stand mixer. They have this kind of doughy sort of consistency. It definitely seems a little bit better incorporated and more uniform. Oh, it's so chewy and gluey and pretty hard to swallow. This is not a good way to make mashed potatoes. Noted. Palms puree. All right, so palms puree is basically just mashed potatoes made with an ungodly amount of fat. 
So here we've got a saucepan of hot milk. We're gonna whisk in a ton of butter to make a smooth emulsion. We've got our trusty ricer, and we're gonna rice these potatoes right into this hot melted butter mixture. Stir, add a little salt, and there you have it. Palms puree, everybody. This is definitely the most extra way to make mashed potatoes. There's so much fat in them that they're Oops, almost gross. horrible. Mm. It's incredibly delicious. If you're the kind of person who eats mashed potatoes on special occasions only, go for it. If you're more like a once a week mashed potato person, this might be a little much for your arteries. Duchess <laughs> potatoes. So we've taken our mashed potatoes, added a little bit of egg, and put them into this piping bag. Now we're gonna pipe little individual mounds of our potato mixture onto a parchment paper lined sheet pan, pop them into the oven at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. These are a Do I have a favorite adorable. type of they're gravy? Fluffy Not little really. puffs of potatoey goodness. I usually don't put mm, gravy on potatoes. They're delicious. They're so light and I airy like them plain. and still have a little bit of With, a like crunch butter. on the edges. It's, I think it's very good. appealing. Microwaved potato. Man, I hate this thing so much. All right, first we're gonna take our potato and poke it a few times to create holes for steam to escape. A little olive oil, salt, and then pop it in there and nuke it for five minutes at high power. Then we're gonna flip it and then nuke it again for three minutes to finish. All I right, think it's funny how like, disappointed potato, he no sounds for some message. And that's because the microwave kind of steams food from the inside out. It's definitely cooked, maybe a little overcooked. Hmm. I mean, look, it doesn't taste bad, but it also doesn't taste remarkable. The main benefit is that it's fast, I guess. Pocket potato. Whole lot of disclaimers on this thing. Do not use in a conventional oven. Do not heat a microwave for more than four minutes. Do not heat on high. Do not expose to open flame. And those are there because people did those things. We're gonna put our potato into this pouch and nuke it People be dumb. Potato express. All right, let's take it out. I mean, look, this is a cooked potato. It feels a little bit less wrinkly and weird than the regular microwave potato did, and it was definitely fast. There's kind of a funny flavor there. It kind of tastes like the pouch. Very efficient, but not really my thing. Pickled potato. We're gonna start by making our brine. We've got that two cups of apple good. cider vinegar here, some sugar, some salt, some black peppercorns, and we're gonna bring that all up to a boil. Then we're gonna let it cool. Now, we're gonna pour this brine over chunks of boiled potatoes and let those marinate overnight in the fridge. Mmm, these smell great, really vinegary and aromatic. The outside of the chunks feel a little bit mushy and they've taken on a little bit of color from the vinegar. Mmm, a lot of this seasoning made its way into the potatoes actually. Very sweet, salty, acidic. These would be great on a cheese board or a crudité plate. Fried potato. Who doesn't like a fried potato? Before we get into french fries, tater tots, and all that good stuff, we're gonna take a whole potato, put it in this deep oh fryer my God. at 325 degrees, and see what happens. Oh, I thought it'd explode. All right, so this is obviously <laughs> not the most efficient way to fry a potato. It took forever. The skin is really crackly, which seems promising. I like sweet potato mm. fries a lot. Well, honestly, it doesn't taste any different I from the more potato, restaurants apart offer from them. that crunchy skin, and it's a pretty inconvenient method. Because they feel fancy. All right, so we tried to fry a whole potato. Not that great. But everybody knows that french fries are potato royalty. There are so many different ways to cut potatoes to fry them. You got crinkle cut, shoestring, waffle fries, steak fries. But today, we're gonna stick to classic, thin, but not too thin classic. fast food style fries. Once fried french fries. Frying potatoes is a temperature game, so we're gonna try a few different methods and see what happens. So we've got our cut potatoes that we soaked in water to remove some of their starch. We're gonna fry these first two batches just one time each. This first fryer is set to 325 degrees, and we're just gonna fry at that temperature until they're done. This next fryer is not on at all. We're gonna drop the cut potatoes in, crank the heat, and let it slowly increase until the potatoes are fried. So these are the ones we fried all the way through at 325. You can already tell they're you don't like not the white super gravy? crispy. White They've got a lot favorite. of color on them, but that's just because they took so long to cook. Let's try them. Mm. Soggy, greasy, good flavor, but a little bit mealy. Not what I'm looking white for. White gravy, it's fried. like cream based, and they usually have so sauce So these are the ones that we brought up it. from cold oil. They really good. already look a lot crispier than the other version. They cooked through at a lower temp and then crisped up as the oil got hotter, which is kind of cool. Mmm. These are very tasty. The interior is nice and creamy, but a smidge leathery on the outside. A smidge. Twice fried french fries. Now we're gonna make french fries the way that most restaurants make them, which involves frying them once at a lower temperature, around 325, so that they're fully cooked through, and then again at a higher temperature, around 375, to get them really crispy. Is it so southern? Our twice fried french fries are actually Probably. less dark than I the ones really that you fried just see once. It served at, like, they're a diners. nice, even brown, 
Mm, these are so good. It's a nice, snappy, immediate crunch. And unlike the other ones, the inside is perfectly creamy. This is probably the best, most reliable way to make great French fries. Frozen French fries. Now that we've established that the two-step cooking method is the most direct route to a delicious French fry, we're gonna take things one step further. First, we're gonna take cut potatoes that we've soaked in water overnight, blanch them in boiling water with a bit of vinegar until they're nearly cooked through. Then, we're gonna fry them in hot oil for just a minute, and then we're gonna put them on a sheet pan to freeze them overnight. After that, we're gonna take them out and fry them in packaged. very hot oil directly from frozen. <laughs> that took five minutes. It's a whole lot minutes. of work, and we're gonna see if we can taste uh, the difference. No. Honestly, I'm taking my time though. Perfect, and I can already tell they're super. super I'm at the point crispy. where I'm like, I'm ready to crash. Mm. These are by far the crunchiest and creamiest that we've had today. Tater tots. Making tater tots at home is kind of a process. We're gonna take some boiled and peeled potatoes I love tater and tater tots. Them, mix in some potato starch to help bind the mixture, and some salt to season it all. Then, we're gonna form them into the classic tater tot cylinder classic. and fry them in 375 degree oil until they're golden brown. Look at those! Wow, these look great! Because we started with grated potato, you have these craggy, crispy edges. They look fluffy and tender on the inside. Mmm! These are actually so much better than the bagged ones. You've got all the crispiness of a french fry with the fluffiness of a baked potato. Highly recommend. I keep on getting my gloves stuck potato in chips. the ties. Don't worry, we wouldn't forget chips. We're gonna slice our potatoes really thinly on a mandolin, soak them in several changes of cold water overnight to get some of the starch off of them. Then we're gonna drain them, pat them dry, and fry them at 300 degrees, stirring them so that they don't stick until they're brown and crispy. One of the things that I like about making potato chips at home is that you can take them a little darker than the store-bought ones. Mmm, salty, shatteringly crisp, deep, dark, roasty potato flavor. Can't argue with that. Palm souffle. So what we're trying to make here is something that's kind of like a potato chip french fry hybrid. It's a French method for making potatoes that puff up kind of like a 3D Dorito. What we're gonna do is cut this potato into thick potato chip sized pieces, rinse them, then fry them once at a lower temperature and then again at a higher temperature so they make a crisp little potato balloon. And that did not work. Well, here we have an attempt at palm souffle. They did not souffle, even kind of. They're floppy, a little greasy, not at all puffed. They don't taste bad, but it's kind of a disappointment. Pan-fried smashed potato. We're gonna start here with a whole baked potato. We're gonna get some olive oil, really hot in a skillet, squish the potato gently to flatten it, and then drop it into this pan and fry it until it's browned on both sides. So this would definitely work a lot better with a bunch of smaller potatoes. This one kind of broke up, and because it was big, there wasn't as much pan contact, which means less browning and less deliciousness. It's not bad, good flavor from the olive oil, but the ratio of crispy to creamy is not ideal. Home fries 1.0. Home fries are a diner classic, and we're gonna try them two ways. First, we're gonna take these raw, cubed, and soaked potatoes, drain them, and put them into a hot pan with a bit of oil where hopefully they'll get nice and browned. Okay, you can see some nice browning on those edges, but pretty much anything that wasn't in direct contact with the heat didn't get any color, which is pretty unappealing. They're not bad, but the exterior is actually a little bit tough, not crispy, and they're pretty greasy. Let's try this again. Home fries 2.0. Okay, we're gonna try this again, but this time we're gonna start with potatoes that have already been fully cooked in salted boiling water. Same deal, cubed into a pan with That's hot oil until shape. they're nice and browned. Okay, you can like already the really tell there's a bit fries. more color, and these definitely look I don't look mind crispier. wedges, but wedges mm, have to be so seasoned much well. better. The inside is nice I, and I like fluffy and well seasoned small, because they were like a little, a little and they got a lot crustier. Potato. This Not is a way better way to make home fries. <laughs> Ash browns. Another diner Curly classic. Fries are only We're gonna take these grated potatoes well. that we've soaked in water overnight, wrap them in this clean towel, and squeeze out as much water as we possibly can. Water is the enemy of browning. Then, we're gonna cook them in a very hot skillet with vegetable oil until they're good and crispy. So I can tell that there's gonna be a lot of cool contrast here between these dark edges and then these barely cooked interior pieces. Yeah, you can really taste that contrast. It's so good. I want a runny egg and some hot sauce to dip this in. Palms Anna. Another Frenchy sounding thing. The idea here is to make a buttery little cake out of sliced potatoes. We're gonna heat a good amount of butter in a nonstick skillet, dry out some thinly sliced and soaked potatoes, and start to layer them into the skillet, adding more butter and seasoning with salt as we go. Then we're gonna cover it so that the potatoes steam while the bottom side browns, flip it onto a plate, and slide it back into the pan to brown the other side. C'est magnifique. It's like a little potato flour. Mmm. 
Oh, I love how your crisp makes really the outside good hash browns. is and how tender and buttery the inside <laughs> is. Very elegante. Stir fried elegante. potato. Now we're gonna make a version of Szechuan style sour and spicy stir fried potatoes but without all the seasonings that would usually go into that dish. We're gonna start with julienne potatoes, dry them off well, and get them into a smoking hot pan with a little bit of oil. We're not trying to brown them, just trying to cook off some of that rawness. We're gonna add a little bit of soy sauce and vinegar to season and we're done. I love this dish. These are just barely cooked with no browning to speak of and definitely Wait, no I've been counting wrong this whole time. These are so tasty. They have a really unique still I have still 49 big ones and then 68 small flavor. ones. So I have like 117, menu, right? Order it. Dehydrated potato. Dude, I'm fucking done. We've got a boiled potato in game. Here. Sorry, that was good. Slice it thinly, lay it out silly. on these racks and then put it inside the dehydrator and let 10. it go overnight. Okay, these are really light and really dry and flavor-wise, oh, no. No, these are not supposed to be eaten this way. Gross. <laughs> George Foreman potato. We're gonna take an already baked potato and really squish it to get it to close. I mean, it kind of looks like it was run over by a car. It's actually kind of tough. Probably could have used more oil to get it crispier. Not dissimilar from our smashed and pan fried method, but kind of a little bit more annoying. Waffle iron potato. We've got our waffle iron nice and hot. We're gonna brush it down with some melted butter and then load in some potatoes that we've julienned and dried off the best we can. Close the lid and hope for the best. This is actually pretty rad. It yeah, just looks, looks like a big hash brown. Mmm. You know, this is surprisingly delicious, but at the same time, I don't think I wanna haul out a waffle maker every time I wanna make a hash brown. Rotisserie potato. All right, well, for whatever reason, we're gonna try to rotisserie a potato. We're gonna make a little guide hole in it with a skewer, and then I'm gonna try to load the potato onto this demonic looking apparatus without maiming myself. A Little bit of olive oil, salt, and around he goes. Meals on wheels. I was actually too afraid to remove any of these metal parts, so here we are. Mm. Look, <laughs> yeah, it's I hate tender throughout, but scary. it's also just about the most annoying way to basically bake a potato. Sous vide potato. First, we're gonna load our sliced potatoes into a bag with some olive oil and salt, and then we're gonna use this easy to operate vacuum sealer to remove all the air. Okay, it's not, all right. Okay, great. Thank you, <laughs> Veronica. And then we're gonna put it in this water bath to cook at 190 degrees for about 30 minutes. All right, let's get these out of the bag. Oh, these look kind of cool, actually. It almost seems like the olive oil and the potato liquid emulsified to form some kind of sauce. Wow, these actually taste amazing. They're rich, dense, and they're incredible on their own, but they'd make an even better potato salad. I was skeptical, but honestly, this is some of the best we've had so far. Dishwasher potato. Let's try it out. Potato <laughs> goes in, close the door, and Did you the try this out? code is pro wash, pro scrub, pro scrub upper, high temp wash. All right, good, that worked. Sorry, I don't have a dishwasher, guys. Oh, whoa, I can't see it. My glasses are fogged up. Okay, got it. Dishwasher potato. I think it's maybe cooked. I don't mind cooked really potatoes. Doesn't feel cooked, and that's because it I is not cooked. I think it just depends cooked. on if they're not cooked, cooked well potato. Three and a half hours in the dishwasher. Yeah, I am not eating this. It but it's also never going to be like my first choice. I know it's too. Parker, the inside looks pretty much the same. 
Yeah, very baked potato-y. I can't see any reason to pull out one of these bizarre devices just to make yeah, it Yeah, air fryer, like honestly overrated. Air fried french fries. All right, fine. So a whole fried potato is not really the promise of the, the air fryer. The actually is reheating french fries. The whole idea is to make fried fries. foods, but with less oil. So let's try out some french fries. We're gonna oil them up, salt, and then pop them in this device for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. So they do seem kind of fried, but they also look pretty dried out. Mm. Yeah, they're not awful, but also kind of weirdly desiccated. Not really my cup of tea. Grilled potato, four ways. They've all got a little bit of olive oil and salt on them. We've got a whole potato wrapped in foil, a naked potato, some potato planks, and we have a potato kebab. They're all gonna take different amounts of time to cook, so we'll take them off as they're ready. Hmm, the skin feels crunchy in a way that doesn't I think another reason why I don't like air fryers promising. is because they're difficult yeah, to looks clean. Really like getting it between all the little holes. And, um, oh, yeah, it's super dried out. I would be pretty bummed out if somebody served me this. Same whole potato, but wrapped in foil this time. This one looks way better, probably like because it was able to, to steam up. cook in that foil. Hmm. If you were trying to cook whole potatoes on the grill, this is oh, a yeah, way better method, air fryer does but it isn't something. really distinctive in any way. The exterior on these potato planks, you've got browning, but a little bit of that leatheriness. Hmm. Pretty tasty, but a little bit dried out. Probably would have been better if we cooked it over charcoal. All right, let me just get these off the skewer. You know, because there's more yeah, surface about area, halfway done they with the actually small ones, colored about a little done. bit more than the plank potatoes did. I think I started hmm. at four, ten up front. But also a little front. bit more dried out than the last ones. This really doesn't seem worth it, to be honest. Potato on a stick. All right, so I whittled a stick, I stuck a potato on it, and we're just gonna cook it over the campfire like a hot dog and see how long I can do this without asphyxiating. <coughs> Oh, and I lost my potato. Hold on, can somebody hand me tongs? All right, well, yeah, we're calling it. All right, so our potato on a stick didn't nice. cook as long as we wanted it to, <laughs> but we'll see what we got. I'm gonna take this piece of stick out so I don't it choke. It looks moldy. Yeah, it definitely does not feel fully cooked, and it's pretty charred. There is a part of this that did cook. Oh, that's really bad. It's pretty acrid and burnt tasting. Yeah, not a great method. Ooh, a smoky whole roasted potato three ways. Now we're gonna try out cooking potatoes directly on the coals of a campfire. We've got a whole potato wrapped Is in any, foil and also one that's fire? completely yeah. naked We used to have a wood stove at my parents' house. We've also got a foil pack of And you have to like stick your hand in right to put in stone in and we're I would come clip back my fingers sometimes. To 20 minutes or like clipping my happens. arm on the edge so of the stove the hurts. Put in totally naked I had a fire loving face. Don't self report. Ideally you would slip this skin off but it's too burned to do that. It's definitely cooked. Hmm, a lot less smoky than I'd expect, and we wasted a lot of potato, so less than ideal. All right, let's unwrap this bad boy. See, we've got a little bit of charring here. The foil is pretty conductive, but it also protected it from getting totally burnt. The inside looks pretty nice. Hmm, it's pretty good. This would probably be the best way to cook whole potatoes if you were camping. All right, let's cut open that foil pack. Okay, surprisingly, these didn't take on any color despite the fact that they were right on the coals. It seems like they just kind of steamed in their own juices. You know, does were it you taste the bad? Kid who had it would a definitely be tastier glass? if you threw in some onions, garlic, chilies, or something like that to season them. Cast iron cooker potato. I think it's supposed to be kind of like a mini oven. You open it up, you put the potato in, lock it, and you lower it into the fire carefully. That's gonna sit there for four hours. Okay, this thing is really hot. And lift off. All right, so we waited like an hour for this to cool. Let's open it up. The skin is super dry and almost too tough to cut through. Ew, the skin looks like a husk, like a burnt coconut shell or something. Let's try a little piece, I guess. Oh, it just tastes like burnt potato skin. Not sure if we did this right, but this is gross. Smoked potato. All right, we've got our little charcoal smoker. We're gonna pop our potato right in there yeah, off the heat. As long as you're no longer the low in that indirect heat and smoke slowly circulate and good. hopefully cook the potato. This is gonna take a while. <laughs> and there's our hopefully smoked potato. I can tell just by looking at it that it lost quite a bit of moisture being exposed to low dry heat for so much time, but it is fully cooked. Hmm, definitely some smoky flavor, but it's kind of weird on its own. It would be so much better mashed up with some butter or sour cream. Blowtorched potato. All right, you know the drill. We got a potato, we got a blowtorch, we're gonna blowtorch the potato. Wow, that's getting really dark. 
I think the aluminum foil might be burning, which can't be healthy. Let's just call it. The exterior is totally burnt. The inside is still really, really hard and uncooked. There's a faint perfume of what I can only assume is vaporized aluminum. Yeah, sorry y'all, I am not eating this. Orange and cooked potato. We've got a handful of cubed potatoes in a foil pack, little oil, little salt, fold it up and wedge it right in there. Really we're gonna leave fast. the engine running for a few hours and see if anything happens. Noted. All right, we're gonna pop the hood and check out our potatoes. Well, the package feels warm, which I guess is a good sign. Yeah, I mean, they are slightly softer than they were at first, but they're definitely not cooked. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell like a car engine, yeah, so that's good. Yeah, 33 done. But yeah, not cooked enough to eat. Damn. Electrocuted potato. I am pretty terrified, to be honest. We've got these two metal leads, and we're gonna spike the potato onto them. This is connected to a gasoline-powered generator, and we're gonna plug it into this giant dimmer switch. We're gonna flip it on, and then crank that dial all the way up to 140 volts. All right, let's see if this is working. And yep, that's 140 volts. All right, I'm gonna stand back. Well, it's starting to bubble and blacken around those leads and smoke. Oh, wow. Yeah, something's definitely happening. I need to switch happening. one of my gloves because right, it's so let's just power wrist. this whole situation down. If it's not cooked by now, it's never going to cook. I'm not sure that 140 volts was enough to actually cook this potato. It still feels pretty hard a little bit warm. It seems like the only part that cooked was right around where those leads went in. There's a little bit of blackening. Cut it open and yeah, that part seems kind of a little bit cooked. I mean, it tastes like a cooked potato, just that littlest so bit. It done doesn't really taste all that different from anything else, pops. but it's pretty impressive nonetheless. To be honest, I'm just glad to be alive. Electrocuted pickled potato. This potato has been soaking in a vinegar and salt water brine, and we're hoping that it might make it more conductive. Whoa, definitely a lot more steaming going on. I think this might actually cook it. Let's power it down and check her out. All right, so even though this one was steaming more, it feels just Hi, as Melody, warm welcome as the last potato in. did. We're doing well today, oh, Mom. yeah, it's even more raw inside than Melody? the first one was, honestly. Let's give that little cooked part a taste. Oh my god, it's Peason's biggest mm. fan. Welcome it's in. It's saltier for sure and more burnt tasting. I'm glad you showed up today. You would have gotten this whole negative thing was points kind of a fail. I think next time we're going to need to use more power. I'm about... All right, so we cooked a whole lot of potatoes a whole lot of a ways. A quarter of the way what done we packaging? Learn? Well, for the most part, a whole potato minutes? is a whole potato is a whole potato. We saw the biggest difference between methods when we broke the potatoes down into different shapes and sizes. Patience is a virtue, sometimes, and you can't rush such a dense tuber. Also, a lot of our favorite methods were actually cooked multiple times, which produced the most interesting contrast. Thanks for watching, everybody, and if you have a favorite way to cook a potato that we forgot, drop it in the comments. Um, actually... Hi, I'm Emil Stonic, editor-at-large at Bon Appetit, and this is almost every way to cook a steak. Ooh! All right, Be we're steak. looking at a whole bunch of steaks. What makes a steak a steak? Well, typically, a steak is a cut of beef that is tender enough and contains enough intramuscular fat, or marbling, to be cooked quickly, as opposed to tougher cuts that are used for braising or slow cooking. There are a whole bunch of steaks on the cow, but today, what we're working with is the boneless ribeye steak. We love this cut because it has plenty of marbling, these thick ribbons of fat that keep things nice and juicy, and a tidy, compact shape. And we're going to cook it every way we can think of. Let's look at some ways of not cooking a steak, shall we? First up, steak tartare. We're simply going to dice our steak into nice little pieces. People like to put all kinds of things in tartare, but here we're just going to use some egg yolk, olive oil, black pepper, and salt. Boom, steak tartare. It's really pretty. It's nice and kind of glossy with the olive oil and the egg yolk. Mmm, really delicious. You can really taste the beef in its purest form here, and the bitterness of the olive oil backs up the grassiness of the meat. This is an amazing way to eat raw steak, if that kind of thing doesn't make you squeamish, that is. Carpaccio. We're gonna cut out a nice centerpiece from our steak, we're gonna butterfly it, and then we're gonna sandwich it between two pieces of plastic wrap and pound it out until it's about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch thick. A little salt and olive oil, and voila, beef carpaccio. This looks great. However, you can see that there's some kind of gnarly schmears of fat in there, which isn't ideal. Carpaccio is usually made with a leaner cut like tenderloin, not a fatty one like ribeye. Mmm, it's still really tasty though. Beefy and clean, I'd love a little spicy arugula and shaved parm on top. Raw steak smoothie. We're gonna cut our steak. Oh my god, toss no. In this high blender, pinch of salt, a little no. bit of water, let her rip. Oh, that looks truly foul. Okay, there it is, folks. Steak smoothie. 
Honestly, it smells horrible. I don't know why, it's just water and steak, but something about the processing did something truly evil. It looks like a cross between pink slime and a strawberry milkshake. It's so thick. Oh. Pink sauce? It's horrible. This is truly disgusting. Do not try this at home, folks. Seared steak. First, we're gonna hit both sides of the steak with plenty of kosher salt. It might look like a lot, but steak really needs it. Then we're just gonna- Okay, I need to swap up the gloves because I'm getting chocolate on now. Smoking hot cast iron pan. Because I'm trying to scrape All off right, any nice chocolate that's around stripped the edges, down. But not so much in these center parts that didn't make contact with the pan. The interior looks really nice, but there's a bit more of this over gray ring That way if it does melt in like. transit, it'll just melt mm, in I'm the not packaging. mad about it. It's still not tender, but would have been even more juicy if that fat had had time to soften. Not bad, but not perfect. Seared and basted steak. We're gonna salt it and get the steak into that smoking hot pan. Now that we've got color on both sides, I'm gonna turn the heat down, slip some butter in there, and baste it a bit until it finishes cooking. I don't think I've ever had like raw wow, raw meat besides amazing. like fish. We've got fish. a little bit more browning because we didn't have to rush the meat out of the pan. I don't mind like a rare steak, but layer. I would be down to try really tartar rendered. one time. Wow, so juicy and delicious. The nutty brown butter mixing with the beef fat is really something. This is definitely the tastiest stovetop only method, but it's probably best for a slightly thicker steak. You know, it's getting a little smoky in here. Let's take this steak party to the backyard for a bit. Grilled steak four ways. We've got a whole steak that we've oiled and salted. We've got cubes of steak that we've threaded onto skewers. We've got some thinly sliced strips of steak that we've woven back and forth onto skewers. And then we have some thinly sliced beef. And we're gonna pull each of these off the grill as they're ready. Grilled steak. One advantage of grilling over pan cooking is the heat is so much more intense, so we're seeing much better caramelization. Wow, the interior looks awesome. We've got an almost wall-to-wall -wall medium rare. Mmm, super juicy, a little bit of smoke flavor, plenty of char. This is one of my all-time favorite ways to cook a steak. Cubed and skewered steak. We're looking at way more surface area here than on a whole steak, so we've got more beautiful char all around each piece. Wow, look at that perfect interior. Mmm. Really tender, tons of brown flavor, still impressively juicy. This can be tricky to get right, but when it's right, it's really, really right. Sliced and skewered steak. Here we have even more surface area than our cubed steak, so we've got even more char, which is awesome. Mm, there's still a bit of pink, but it's definitely way more cooked. Mm, even though it's not medium rare, we've traded that perfect interior. I mean, isn't beef one of the safer meats to eat raw? This is really tasty would be even better with some kind of soy like if you eat raw chicken then it could be gg steak. so here we've completely maximized i think it all depends on like took on a ton of color if the meat is like stored properly well done, no matter what. Or like how soon mm, not bad as it was like butchered the side compared with the other grilled steaks we've tried but they've got a ton of good smoke flavor and plenty of char all right let's head back inside shall we toaster steak Okay, first things first, we're gonna have to cut our steak in half just to get the pieces to fit in the damn thing. We're gonna pop it in and see what comes out on the other side. Pop goes the weasel, it's done. Okay, the exterior leaves something to be desired. This fat cap actually browned pretty nicely. I'm kind of expecting the inside to be a mess. Wow, more gray than I want, but not too shabby temperature-wise. Pretty nice, actually. Definitely wish there was more caramelization, but shockingly not bad. Easy bake steak. This may be the <laughs> first time anyone has ever cooked a steak in an easy bake oven in the history of the world. It's not gonna fit, so we're gonna have to trim it to fit this teeny tiny tray. We're gonna slide it in here to bake and flip it halfway through. Voila, easy bake steak. I mean, honestly, it's completely gray, but it's hard to tell oh it seems God. to be neither raw nor cooked. Oh, there's something wrong with the way it tastes. Honestly, it's kind of pretty Dude, juicy. Anything made like in an easy bake oven is always gonna be trash. It's just for the novelty of kids thinking Laser they can cook. Steak. I gotta put some safety goggles on. I've never made anything good in it. Apparently, the most powerful laser that a consumer can buy. Behold, the Thanos 5000 megawatt laser pointer. We're gonna put the batteries in, screw it together, and then use this key to unlock the safety. Uh, yeah, there is a safety. And uh, now we're good to go, I guess. Let's let her rip. Yeah, no, it actually looks this crazy. It's not photoshopped, I promise. <laughs> okay, I guess it's done. Dude, that's so wicked. Here we have our cooked, mostly not cooked steak. This is pretty much a raw steak with this little patch here that does seem to be kind of cooked. So I'm gonna try to kind of excise that. I feel like I'm performing a biopsy. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Something is horribly wrong here. It tastes like burnt hair. No more lasers. Ooh. Not ever. No more lasers. Stir-fried steak. 
Say no to lasers. Taken in nice thin pieces. Vote no. The idea here is that we want to throw <laughs> them in and cook them as briefly as possible. A little bit of oil. Meat goes in. Toss, toss, toss so nothing sticks, and we're done. Yeah, Stop I have no us. idea how my sister right is gonna bat, bring this to work. We could have left these in the walk for another minute. Probably. Is this box? I've got some nice char around the edges here, but a lot of bits that are still a bit medium. It's basically here. full already, and it only has like forty. Distinct walk flavor going on here. It's a specific, irresistible smoke. Did I bite off more than I can chew? Cooking. Shaved and griddled steak. We're gonna lock our steak into this deli slicer and shave it really thin, the way you would for a cheesesteak. We're gonna oil up our smoking hot griddle and slap Ooh, the slice Ooh, a cheesesteak sandwich down. sounds so good. We're going for maximum caramelization here, not a medium rare. Now we're gonna flip it, use our spatula to shred it up a bit. Nice. So this is really all I've been craving contrast. Subway so bad, but it's but way too expensive. I don't need it. Brown bits. Mm, super succulent. Because I usually Ooh, get a BMT, like but so, instead of ham, so I get turkey. Give me some cheese whiz. Or I get a steak, steak deluxe we're meat. Take our very cold so steak, good. Cut it into chunks and feed it through the meat grinder. Now we're gonna form it gently into a fat patty, season it with salt, and sear it in a hot cast iron. Mmm, burger time. Look at that crust. We've got a ton of nice browning around the edges, and it's very tender since we packed it so loosely. We basically deconstructed and reorganized the steak. Mmm. Yum. I don't even want a bun. The contrast. Get a meatball, is add pepperoni. Uh, you Pretty can get good. A similar result with a cheaper cut of beef, honestly. You know, I'm ready for a little fresh air. Let's head back outside. Campfire steak, three ways. This first steak, we're gonna slap onto this preheated rock. This one, we're gonna put directly onto these hot coals. And this one has been mummified. We covered it with salt and wrapped it in wet cloth for some reason. Now we're gonna flip these over and they should be done. Hot rock steak. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty disappointed with the crust here. Yeah, it's a hair overcooked and pretty underbrowned. Mm. Honestly, it's fine. A little extra smoke flavor, but I can't see why I would bother with a rock. Whole cooked steak. Wow, we've got some really impressive color going on here, but I can tell it's a bit overcooked and there's quite a bit of graying here. A lot of smoky flavor though, and still pretty juicy. On the whole, I love this method, but it's a bit of a wild one. Good, but tough to control. Mummified steak? Okay, this is clearly a hot mess. It looks like a burnt diaper. Oh, still on fire. Hold on. Okay, it's really unevenly cooked, and the outside is really disappointingly pale. Oh, horrible. It's inedibly salty and tastes like a burned t-shirt. I feel like I have to go inside and take a shower now. I feel filthy. Boiled steak. Who would boil a ribeye steak? We would. We're gonna season our water with salt and just slip our steak right in there. And we're gonna pull it out when we've got an internal temperature of 125 degrees. Yummy. All right, so no browning at all. No Maillard reaction is happening in such a wet environment. It looks gross, just gray all over. And that fat looks especially nasty. It's pretty perfect inside. It's tender, but it seems to have lost some of its juiciness and medium rare with no browning at all just tastes kind of flabby and gross. Hot pot steak. We've got our pot of hot broth bubbling. We are gonna slice our steak as thinly as possible. And now we're just gonna lower our meat right in there and let it cook for no more than 15 seconds or so. And then we're gonna pluck it right out. Ta-da! So if we were really eating a hot pot, we'd be putting pieces in individually, pulling them out and eating them immediately with rice, maybe a dipping sauce, instead of cooking it all at once and just plain old chicken stock. There's no browning at all. That's to be expected. Mm. It's not bad. It's very tender, but typically this would be made with a much more flavorful broth. Sous vide steak. 
We're gonna season our steak, we're gonna pop it in this plastic bag, and we're gonna use a vacuum sealer to suck out all the air and seal it. Then, we're gonna put it into this pot fitted with an immersion circulator, which is gonna keep this water at a consistent 128 degrees for the next hour and a half. And now that our steak is a perfect medium rare inside, we're gonna get it out of the bag and sear it on both sides just until it's browned. Boom. Done. We're seeing pretty good browning here, which didn't take much time at all to achieve. And that inside, whew, a perfect, almost wall-to-wall -wall medium rare. And that's the big advantage of sous vide cooking. It tastes great, but there's a slight, almost sponginess that I don't love. It's perfect Ooh. technically, but it's a little bit soulless, if you ask me. <laughs> it's baked soulless. Steak. Who's excited about baked steak? No one. This is oiled and salted, and we're gonna pop it in a 350 degree oven for about six ones. minutes. Now we're gonna flip it and give it another six, and that is done. All right, I can already tell that this steak wanted way more heat. No caramelization to speak of, and this fat isn't looking so good. I mean, it is nicely cooked inside though. It's tender, but I wish it had been seared first. 350 was definitely not enough to get the job done on its own. This feels like half a way to cook a steak. Broiled steak. So baked didn't work out that well. Let's see if we have better luck with the broiler. We're basically gonna do the same thing, just a little bit less time and at a higher temperature. Give it a flip. That was so funny, he's making eating right, noises. <laughs> disappointing <laughs> and they recorded the voiceover later. That's about it. We've got a lot of that kind of gray ring here. It wasn't quite hot <laughs> enough, I think. Mm. Not terrible, but I'd much rather oh have a steak in the pan. Why don't we take a backyard break while some of this smoke clears? Uh, Searzol steak. Sure is We've good. got our steak. We've got our Searzol, which is basically just a modified <laughs> blowtorch, and we're going to use it to apply really, really direct high heat to the whole surface of the steak. Wow, it's getting really hot. All right, that's got to be done. I'm calling it. You know, it was a pain in the ass to hold that hot blowtorch for so long. We've got some really good color going on here. But cutting in, there are some parts that look nice. I mean, nice, maybe he is recording. And some that are undercooked. It's not awful, and I really appreciate the flavor of that crust, but it's too difficult to cook the steak. You know, they probably have good minds. want to do it again. Steak on a stick. So we've got a steak impaled on a stick, and we're going to cook it caveman style right over the flames, turning it every few minutes or so so it cooks evenly. <laughs> That's really smoky and really, really Hi, hot. Crystal. Welcome okay, back. That's got to be done now. So the exterior is really more singed than anything else. And it's definitely on the rare the guy, side. Guys, stop ruining my immersion. Just let the guy make a, a good video. Flavor. I mean, this isn't a bad method necessarily, but holding it in front of that fire was pretty uncomfortable and tedious. Afterburner steak. We've got a chimney full of hot coals here. We're just going to put this steak directly over the chimney like so. This thing is hot, people. Time to give it a flip, and she's done. We've got some impressive browning, almost verging on charred, but it's definitely a little uneven. This definitely would have been better with a bigger chimney or a smaller steak. The inside is actually pretty gorgeous. Mmm, big smoke flavor, really juicy, but there's some grisly bits that need more time to render. This method has a ton of potential. All right, let's take this back inside. George Foreman steak. We had to do it, folks. Steak goes in, close it, and let the boxing box do its thing. We've got grill marks, but we don't have the nice even char that we like to see. The inside's fine. Hmm. Not bad, not great. Waffle iron steak. Now we're gonna sling Dude, the steak into a hot waffle so iron bad. and see what happens. We're gonna have to weigh it down so it stays closed. Wow, that is something. We've got some decent color at those points of contact, nowhere else, and it's definitely overcooked. Mm, yeah, pretty dry. There's no reason to cook a steak this way. Infrared grilled steak. So this spooky looking thing is an infrared grill, which apparently is okay to use indoors. We're gonna slap the steak right on there. It doesn't seem that hot considering how little it's sizzling. All right, that should do it. I think this maybe haunted the steak more than it cooked it. Very <laughs> limited browning. Uh, and it's not terrible inside, but there's a little more of that gray than you wanna see. Hmm. I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't see why you turn your kitchen into a haunted house when you can just heat up a pan. Pass. Pan to oven steak. We're gonna try a bit of a hybrid method here. First, we're gonna sear our steak on both sides in this smoking hot cast iron pan. Then, we're gonna transfer it to a 450 degree oven and let it come up to temperature. And it's done. Okay, we've definitely got okay, some final good five of the baby cake pop. Extra color probably in the oven. So we'll be a little over halfway through packaging. Why is this taking gray. so freaking long? Yeah. Mm. 
Plot twist, I'm, I'm the one making the chewing sounds. Some of the other methods we've seen today. Pan to broiler steak. It's actually me. Similar, but a little bit different. Now, we're going to sear our steak in a hot pan, and then finish it under the broiler. Give it a flip. Ta-da! Impressive color. The broiler did a lot of good work, and the inside is pretty spot on. Mmm. This is surprisingly good, better than the other panda oven method. I still think that fat needed a little bit more time to render, but not too shabby. Reverse seared steak. This time, we're going to put our steak in a 225 degree oven for about 25 minutes first, just until it's medium rare. Then, we're going to sear it in a hot cast iron pan for about Damn. a minute on each side. Just like that, it's done. Reverse seared steak. Amazing color on this one. Amazing. I'm loving the way the <laughs> interior looks. Great wall-to-wall -wall color, and the fat looks wobbly and perfect. Mm. Great balance between that tender, soft meat and that crispy exterior. This is definitely one of my all-time favorite ways to cook a steak. Deep-fried steak. Everything's better fried, right? We're just going to season our steak right. and lower it into this That's pot right. of 350-degree vegetable oil and see what comes out on the other side. Let that extra oil drip off, and we've got a deep-fried steak. That hot oil delivered really, really even color, which we like, but it's also kind of greasy looking. Yeah, it's a bit overcooked. Mm. <laughs> I feel like I this is it could work really well, but deep snake. frying is just kind of annoying. <laughs> country fried steak. Normally, you'd make a country fried steak with a cheap, tough cut, but we fancy. First, we're going to use a meat mallet to pound it thin and create some texture. Then we're going to dredge it in seasoned flour, then an egg milk mixture, then flour again, and then deep fry until it's golden brown all over. Damn, that looks good. So we've got this beautiful golden battered exterior, but that's coming at the expense of any actual caramelization of the meat itself. Yeah, the inside is definitely more medium to medium well. Hmm. I mean, it's delicious. This is definitely a great way to cook a steak, but not such a pricey one. Freeze fried steak. We're gonna score. Dude, what was the budget for this video? And then we're gonna freeze. Like how much do you think they spent on steak? Now that it's rock hard, we're gonna deep fry it so the outside is crusty, but the inside is still totally okay, frozen. Okay, final baby and cake then pop. We're gonna bake it until the inside comes up to temperature. And then we're gonna fry it again. Dude, so the how did it take an hour crispy. to package sixty? There you have it, folks. Wow, incredible It's like nearly a minute per. That's, that can't be right. Oh, wait, I started 15 today. minutes in. That inside is, is very impressive, but it's not still, 100% that's... perfect. No, no. Mm. The seasoning really penetrated, though, because it had so much time to sink in, and it's really tender and really flavorful. It's a neat party trick, but a little overboard considering what we were able to get with the regular old reverse seasoning. Okay, baby All cake right, pop's done. Smoke Smoked steak. <laughs> The smoker's all fired up. We're going to pop our steak in Look there for 20 like to 30 minutes so it can cook through. Messy this And then this we're going to finish it on a super hot grill. All the extra chocolate. Oh, this one smells amazing. It's almost like pastrami. And that crust is gorgeous. Exactly the big boys. Like oh, that beautiful color. Wall-to-wall -wall pink, really juicy looking. Mmm, yum. Kay. This is really special. Tons of smoke flavor, delicious char, so, so succulent. I'll definitely be doing this again. Look at you that. Know, Look that at all these. Too good, which probably means it's time to make a microwave. Okay, <laughs> this box steak. is full. All right, we're going to take our beautiful, pricey ribeye steak, salt it, and put it in the microwave for a total of four minutes, flipping it halfway through. Happy? I'm not. Ugh, this looks Gross. I'm Honestly, trying to find like another box I can put the other ones in. Like it cooked from the inside out or something. I don't know. This makes me want to cry. I gotta scrounge around for a minute. We'll never do this, okay? So I'm gonna put these in the fridge steak. for now. All right, we're gonna use the saute function to brown both sides of the steak, which seems to work actually pretty well. Then we're gonna add water, pressurize the pot, and cook it for about 10 minutes. And that is an instant pot ribeye. We've got these fattier okay. exterior pieces that are soft and still rich, while the inside really muscle is really dried out. I'll just mm. put them in a bag. It doesn't taste bad. And then my sister can say, find something to present so it with. obviously be so much better with a chuck roast or is other kind of meat that begs for long, slow cooking. Not this beautiful steak. Slow cooker steak. Before we slow cook our steak today, we're going to sear bake. it on both sides. Then we're going to put it into the slow cooker with just enough water you to know what else is my job? set it on low for five hours. Oof, that does not You know work. what else is my job? So after all that time, this You know what else is my job? Running ads, because shout out to me, are five hours into stream. My goal is to be done at five hours, but we're not done. So, <sighs>
Jesus Christ. If you want, it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can like Amazon Prime, Twitch, Twitch, and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have a Prime available. If you're new here, click follow. You get to type in chat and you get ex exclusive follower only emails. After the ad, we're going to keep on packaging. I have 49 more to pack. So probably about an hour more. Holy. Non subs get boomed. Oh my god. Okay, we're getting there though. Okay, I gotta wash my hands again. Steak really shrunk up. I can tell that it's gonna be a lot drier than our braised or instant pot steak. Mm, this is sad. Five hours was too many hours. Sorry for doing this to you, steak. Steak jerky. We're gonna cut this ribeye into thin strips, salt them, and then pop them in the dehydrator to Dude, dry out. Dude, my hands are so hours. dry. All right, let's pull these out and take a look. Ugh. Looks like jerky, all right. You know, what's interesting here is how much color we got at such a low temperature over such a long period of time. Yeah. If you handed this to me, I would say it's great beef jerky, but knowing that it could have been a juicy, medium rare steak, that hurts. Dehydrated and seared steak. So now we're gonna try a slightly different version of a reverse sear. We're gonna use the dehydrator for the initial cooking instead of the oven. This is gonna cook at 122 degrees for about four hours. All right, slide that out. Now that it's up to temp and the outside looks kind of jerky-like, we're gonna sear it quickly in a cast iron pan. Wow, that looks good, huh? Obviously that took some time, but that outside color is worth it. This is probably the best caramelized steak we've seen all day. And that interior, stunning medium rare. It looks really rich and glossy. I can't wait to try this one. Wow, this tastes incredible. Really complex brown flavors. The fat got soft without rendering out, so it's really juicy and the flavor is super concentrated. This is an awesome way to cook a steak if you've got four hours on your hands. All right, today we cooked a whole lot of steaks in a whole lot of different ways. What did we learn? All of our favorite versions were evenly browned and crusty on the outside and uniformly pink and juicy on the inside. There are a whole lot of different ways Ain't to achieve no this result, way. but by far the most effective <laughs> methods combined a low and slow technique with a hot and fast one. Also, just say no to microwaves. <laughs> oh, Bye -bye. and in case you're wondering, we used all that leftover steak to make a killer batch of chili. Have a oh, favorite yeah. way to cook a steak that you didn't see here? Drop it in the comments. Hi everyone, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is almost every way to cook salmon. There's a whole lot of oh, fish salmon. in the sea, people. There's big fish yes. and little fish, red fish and blue fish, but today we're going to be taking a closer look at one very special fish in particular, salmon. Specifically, we're going to be working with Aura King Salmon, a sustainably farmed variety that's firm fleshed, super rich, and really, really versatile. And we're going to cook it every way we can think of. Sashimi. All right, this raw preparation is about as simple as they come. We've got our salmon filet and we're gonna remove the skin and then we're gonna cut our fish into nice, clean, bite-sized pieces. Voila, salmon sashimi. So this is just salmon, nothing else. Mmm, that salmon is so rich. You're really tasting all of that fat. It's really Dude, meaty. I'm getting so hungry watching these extremely videos. Extremely tender. It's hard to oh, imagine cooking it when it's so sad. delicious this way. Ceviche. Okay, we're gonna remove the skin again because the skin will be tough if it's not cooked. We're gonna cut our salmon into a quarter inch dice, hit it with some salt, and then squeeze the juice of this lemon over top. We'll let that sit for a few minutes before tasting to let the acid from the citrus kind of cook the salmon. Wow, you can see that the colors change somewhat. That's the acid interacting with the protein. Mmm. The texture is definitely firmer than the sashimi. It's not the best fish for the job. Ceviche is typically Ooh, made with a leaner, too. flakier fish, but this is still very tasty. There's a poke Here place near me, and it's pretty good. We've got brown good. sugar, we've got salt, we've got some dill, and we're gonna mix that all really together. Expensive, though. Then we're gonna pack it around the salmon and wrap it up really tightly, and then weigh it down with this pan and pop it in the fridge to cure. Now that it's been sitting for a couple of days, we're gonna unpack our salmon. It's kind of a sticky mess. We're gonna cut a few thin slices. Homemade Gravlox. It's darkened slightly and gone kind of matte thanks to the salt and the sugar cure. Oh no, mm. the peppermints are filling up. Delicious huge sweet salty flavor with an incredibly silky texture like smoked salmon without the smoke pan seared salmon doesn't get much more straightforward than this folks we're going to season our fish on both sides with salt add a little oil to our super hot pan and then gently place our fish in here skin side down we're going to use a fish spatula to apply a bit of light pressure to keep the skin from curling up and then let it cook on the skin side about 90 percent of the way 
and then flip it just to kiss the other side. Ta-da! Pan-seared salmon. Damn, that skin looks crispy. You can actually hear it crackle when you cut it. And the inside is beautiful, just barely cooked through. Mmm, it's moist and juicy. Nothing fancy, just simple, delicious, perfectly cooked salmon. Cold pan salmon. Okay, similar, but totally different. We're gonna season our fish on both sides, get a bit of oil into this room temperature pan, place our fish skin side down, and crank the heat. This way, the fish will cook a bit more slowly as the pan heats up, and the fat in the skin will render and crisp up gradually. Flip it over for just a second, and it's good to go. The skin looks nice and crispy, but not quite as crispy as our hot pan method. The inside looks perfect. Mmm. It's almost as good as our hot pan salmon. The skin is my only complaint, pan fried salmon. This time, we're gonna season our salmon, dredge it in some flour, oil our hot pan, and lay our fish skin side down in it. We're gonna slip a few tablespoons of butter in here, flip our fish, and then baste it a bit with the foaming butter while it finishes. Mmm, that smells great. The filet took on color a lot more quickly than our other pan methods, and that's because of the flour and the brown butter. And yeah, the inside is a bit rare, but if we had left it in the pan, it would have burned. Mmm, yum. It's still tasty, even though it's so rare, but at the end of the day, I don't think that the flour helped our cause. Salmon burger. We're gonna take the skin off and cut it into chunks. We're gonna take a third of it and process it to a paste, which is gonna act as a binder. Then we're gonna pulse the rest of the fish so it's still kind of chunky, scrape it into a bowl, add a bit of mayo and some salt, and then form it into patties and let them chill to firm up. Now that it's been a few hours, we're gonna lightly flour the patty, get some oil into the pan, and carefully sear it on both sides. Here comes the flip. Beautiful. The outside looks nicely browned and crisp thanks to the flour, and the inside looks tender. Mmm, it's pretty tasty. But the texture leaves something to be desired. This would maybe be a great way to gussy up some cheap or even canned salmon, but this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. You know, let's go outside and get a little fresh air. Grill time. All of these have been salted and oiled already. We've got a whole filet that we're gonna lay skin side down right here. Some cubes of salmon that we've threaded onto skewers here. And here we have a soaked and preheated cedar plank that we're gonna lay another filet onto here. We're just gonna take these off as they're ready. Grilled salmon. So, grilling salmon can be a bit tricky. It's fatty, which causes flare-ups, but it's also delicate, so it's hard to move around a lot. This filet definitely got more char than we wanted, and that skin is burnt. Inside, yeah, it's almost raw. Mmm, yeah, this is not ideal. The burnt bits taste sooty and bitter, and the inside is kind of just warmed through. Grilling can be a great way to cook salmon, but we didn't nail this one. Cedar plank salmon. So this cedar plank kind of acted like a barrier between the intense heat of the grill and the fish, and we're hoping that the wood lent some kind of flavor here. The skin is still totally soft, and there's no browning, but we've got a nice medium to medium rare interior. Mmm, not bad, but I'm not getting much wood flavor at all. Definitely prevented flare-ups, but it also didn't add all that much. It seems more like a gimmick than anything else. Salmon kebabs. Okay, we've got some nice grill marks going, but not a ton of exterior caramelization. The inside, definitely on the more well done side. Mmm, pretty tasty, not as juicy as I'd like. These smaller pieces are way easier to overcook than a whole filet, and we weren't able to cook them long enough to get a ton of color. These would be better with some kind of glaze to speed up the browning process. Grill basket salmon. We got our grill basket. We got our oiled and salted salmon. We're gonna put it right in here. We're gonna lock it, and then we're gonna put it on our hot grill. The nice thing about this apparatus is that it makes it easier to move the salmon around. Flip it after a couple of minutes, and she's done. You know, I'm pretty disappointed by the color we got here. The basket protected the skin, but maybe a bit too much. The flesh is nicely cooked. Mmm, good, but not a whole lot going on. This would probably be better with a larger piece of fish. Let's head back inside and make some pickled salmon. We've got our skinless filet right here, and we're gonna cut it into a few bite-sized chunks and get them into this jar. Then, we're gonna pour a hot mixture of vinegar, salt, and sugar over top before screwing the lid on and letting it hang out for a few hours in the fridge. So the color has changed significantly. It's very flaky, but it doesn't feel dried out, and it smells really vinegary. Mmm, yum, very tangy and sweet. It's definitely a stronger flavor, so if fishy things aren't your bag, it's not for you, but I love it. Canned salmon. 
Urban homesteading time. We're gonna cut our filet into six pieces, layer them into this jar with a bit of salt and a splash of vinegar and screw the lid on tight. Then we're gonna load it into this pressure canner, set it for high pressure and crank the heat. Okay, time to depressurize it. All right, now that it's cooked, depressurized and cooled, we can open it up and that's canned salmon. As you can see, the fish is fully submerged in liquid. We didn't add any of that, it's just salmon juice. It's definitely sealed, which means we did it right. Yeah, these salmon pieces are fully, fully cooked. Mmm, you know, it's not bad. It's just a little dry, it has the texture of like canned tuna. I miss the moisture, but if I had a ton of salmon I didn't know what to do with, this would be a pretty efficient way to make it shelf stable. Poached salmon. We're gonna season it on both sides, open our fish poacher, which is full of gently simmering fish stock, lay our filet down and cover it. Now that it's done, we're gonna lift this base out and voila, poached salmon. It's worth noting that this apparatus is really meant for a whole fish. It makes it easier for the whole thing to be cooked gently and then lifted out fully intact. But our filet feels really nice, even without any browning to speak of. Ooh, it flakes really easily and it's super juicy looking. Mmm, yum. Coffee pot salmon. Say you're in a hotel room and you wanna cook a piece of salmon, but you got Why? nothing to cook it with. Wrong. You've got a coffee maker. The maids will We're gonna hate plop you. our filet into this carafe. You're with a ruining pinch of their salt. coffee maker. We're gonna fill the basin with water and turn this bad boy on. Well, that's a coffee pot full of salmon and water, all right. Let's give this liquid a taste first. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna want to make coffee in here ever again. <laughs> the salmon is actually flaking nicely. They'd probably mm. charge you like a hundred you know, bucks damages to the room if you ruin their terrible. coffee pot. And even though it lost some flavor to the water, it's still. Pretty tasty. Salmon riette. We're starting with poached and chilled salmon and we're gonna flake it into this food processor. Add a bit of mayo, some lemon juice, a pinch of salt, and then we're gonna pulse it just enough to break the salmon up. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It looks like cat food. Salmon riette, everybody. Nah. So this would obviously be cuter if we put it in a little mason jar and garnished it with some chives or something. On its own, it looks pretty gnarly. Hmm. It's actually really delicious. The lemon adds some nice balance to all that richness. Salmon ice cream? Hold on to your butts, people. We're making salmon ice cream. First, we need to make our ice cream base. We're gonna add cream and milk and butter to this saucepan and bring that to a simmer over a Savory medium. ice cream? I don't well, know if that'd be working. good. We've got some egg yolks, sugar, and a pinch of salt, and we're gonna whisk them together until they're light and fluffy. Now that our dairy is hot, we're gonna add a bit at a time to our eggs to temper them. Now, we're gonna dump it into this blender, Add about a third of our poached salmon filet and set aside the rest for later. Buzz it up. Mmm, that's appetizing. We're gonna transfer this back to our saucepan, cook it until it's thick, and then transfer it back into this bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and chill it until it's nice and cold. We're gonna pour it into this ice cream machine and let her rip. Now that it's almost finished, we're gonna add our flaked salmon for, uh, texture, I guess? And now that it's done, we're gonna scrape it into a loaf pan and let it freeze. This fully guy's so crazy. Nice hard. So now our ice cream is completely frozen. I mean, oh my God, the crazier oh my thing is we'll get people to click on the video, but, right? Uh, here we have the fishiest Facebook Sunday moms that are ever like, was. Whoa. I mean, I would it never think looks to do that. Good, like it could be something delicious, like strawberry and not salmon. Some chunks in there. Mm. <laughs> you know, up front. It just tastes like really good ice cream with a distinctly fishy aftertaste. Oh, no. It's like eating ice cream while feeding your cat. Steamed salmon. We're going to season our filet, open this bad boy up, and place our salmon on a little piece of parchment just to keep it from sticking. All right, it's been about four minutes. Lid off. Scoop out our beautiful piece of steamed salmon. So no browning here, which is to be expected. This skin looks just like it did when it was raw. Cutting into it, we've got a nice silky medium rare in there. Mmm, very simple. Not a whole lot going on, but this would be delicious on a rice bowl or something with an assertive dipping sauce. Boiled salmon. We've got our pot of hot water here. We're gonna crank the heat, hit it with a few good pinches of salt and slide our filet in there and close the lid. And that, my friends, is boiled salmon. So compared with our other wet cooking methods, this is definitely the least delicate. It actually looks fairly nicely cooked inside. It's not over. Hmm. I don't hate it, but it would be really easy to overcook it this way. If I'm cooking salmon in water, I'm gonna poach or steam it for sure. You know, it's getting a little fishy in here. Let's head back outside. Campfire salmon three ways. We've got a campfire. We've got two fillets of salmon that we've wrapped tightly in clay. 
We've got a filet of salmon that we've wrapped in a banana leaf that we're gonna place on top of this hot rock. And last but not least, we've got two filets of salmon that we've wrapped up in some damp moss for some reason. And we're gonna wedge it right in here. Damn, this fire's hot. And we're gonna take these out as they're ready. Okay, banana leaf is ready. Moss is ready? Clay is hard, so I guess this one's done too. Clay cooked salmon. So the idea here was that the clay would kind of harden to create a protective layer, and it definitely hardened. Let's break this open. God, I hope this clay isn't poisonous. Wow, it didn't stick to the salmon as much as I thought, just the skin. That's actually why we used two fillets, so that we could have skin on both sides. The inside of the salmon is really pretty, actually. Mm. Honestly, it just tastes like nicely cooked salmon, but nothing special. This seems like more of a party trick than anything else. Banana leaf salmon. It's not bad looking. Even though it was right on that hot rock, there's no crisping of the skin. It just kind of steamed in there, which is cool. It's definitely more on the rare side. Mmm, tastes like steamed salmon with a bit of a vegetal flavor going on from the leaf. And just the tiniest hint of smoke. I'd try this again. Moss covered salmon. This looks pretty scary, to be honest. I'm not sure if the moss was supposed to burn, but it did. It's hard to figure out the best way to open it. Okay, all right, a lot of freaky looking parts. Like I said, it's probably the producer is telling him what to do in the video. Not as inside as I thought, <laughs> just really uneven. Mm, it tastes a little burny, even though it didn't take on any color at all. This wasn't nearly as bad as I thought, but it's a pretty terrifying way to cook salmon. You know, things are getting a little weird out here. Let's head back to the kitchen. Deep fried salmon. Time to fry. Ooh, that sounds We're good. gonna season this fillet and drop it into 360 degree oil and let it do its thing. Pop okay, it this kit came with 100 a bags salt, and then probably like 200 fries because I have so many the extra. Skin is nice and crispy, and a crust kind of formed all the way around, which is cool. Hmm. Got halfway the done with these large the cake pops. Side, but it's still flaking nicely. Hmm. It's like the so get juice your I was here spam there. ready guy. A little greasy. We're nearing the end, probably 15, 20 annoying, more minutes. But it's definitely not a bad way to cook salmon. Beer battered salmon. We're gonna make a quick beer batter. We've got some all-purpose flour. We're seasoning it with salt. We're gonna open this beer. Hmm. We're gonna add our beer and whisk it until it's the consistency of pancake batter. We're gonna season our fish, pop it into the batter, and then right into the hot oil. Ooh, crispy. This crust is beautiful. Crispy and light, just kinda shatters. And the fish inside looks so nice. Mmm. I love this. The batter is crispy and flaky and perfect. Fish sticks. Okay, we're gonna cut this filet into four pieces. We're gonna beat these egg whites until they're nice and foamy. Then we're gonna season our fish, dredge them in a bit of flour, then into the egg whites, and then into some breadcrumbs. We're gonna repeat with the rest of the pieces and then drop the basket. Look at those salmon fish sticks. So this breadcrumb layer is denser than the batter for sure. It's a bit lower profile, but still very crisp. Mm. Oh, a totally different eating experience from the battered fish, but still juicy and delicious. All that fatty goodness got trapped inside. A real step up from your freezer aisle fish sticks. Air fryer salmon. We've got an air fryer. Pop it in Dude, this guy hates the air fryer. <laughs> What's his deal? This is just as good as frying, but I'm suspicious. He's almost as big a hater of the oh, air fryer as me. That is disappointingly flabby. It does seem like a little bit of the fat rendered, and there's a smidge of browning around the edges. Mm. Yeah, it's totally fine. With the air frying isn't adding anything to this equation. Why break out R2-D2 when you can just cook it in a pan? Salmon skin chips. Okay, so we've taken the skin off of a bunch of these salmon fillets, but that doesn't mean we have to throw it all out. We're gonna take these pieces of skin and get them into the hot oil to crisp up. A little salt, and we've got salmon skin chips. These are cool. They kind of have the texture of a pork rind or something like that. Mmm, super crunchy, mild fishy flavor. It's like isolating the best part of a crispy salmon fillet, sous vide salmon. We're gonna use our vacuum sealer to suck all the air out and seal it. There, this is gonna keep the water at a consistent 115 degrees for about 40 minutes. We're gonna pop it out of this bag, it's very delicate now, get it nice and dry, and then crisp it up in a very hot pan for about a minute on each side. That crust is fairly crispy, but not as crispy as our straight up pan seared salmon, honestly. The inside is gorgeous though. Mmm, so nice. The skin is nicely brown. The inside is almost custardy. 
I'm really happy with this result, but honestly, it's pretty fussy and definitely not better okay, than about that. ten left. Salmon jerky. We're gonna slice our salmon into quarters. Oh, salmon jerky is pretty good. Lots of salt and slide it into this dehydrator for about 18 hours at 158 degrees. Ooh, smells like salmon in here. That looks like jerky, all right. You know, it's pretty flexible and it flakes apart easily. Definitely not as tough as beef jerky because it's so much fattier. Mm, it's really tasty, very salty, and definitely a smidge dried out. Again, this would be a great way to preserve salmon if you caught way too much of it to eat in a week. But otherwise, it's not as delicious as some of our other methods. Hair dryer salmon. We're gonna season this fish a little bit on all sides. We've got our hair dryer set to high. You know, I'm really more nervous about this working than not working. I really don't like the idea of people putting something so close to their head that could actually cook their scalp. Okay, it's True. done. I, I hate guess. hair dryers. So the skin is not crisp, and the inside is pretty much raw. Mm. Well, but you know, it's warmed all the way to the core, and it doesn't taste awful. You know, it kind of smells like burnt hair in here. Let's go back outside. Smoked salmon. This salmon has been cured with salt and sugar for around 24 hours. We're going to open up our smoker, slide our fish in skin side down, and let it smoke for about an hour and a half. Whoo, that's smoky. She's done. So the outside is darkened somewhat, and it smells amazing. Wow, there's definitely a lot of contrast between the slightly leathery exterior and this really juicy interior. Mmm, so moist. That flavor is outstanding. Salty and strong, yum. Searzal salmon. We've got our Searzal, which is basically just a modified blowtorch. And we're gonna cook this salmon a bit all over so that okay, final it's ten, the final ten. And completely raw inside. Almost done. Very similar to the way that you would for Japanese style tataki. Done and done. That was fast. So the skin has been crisped, and it's just barely opaque all the way around. Cutting in, it's totally raw inside. It's still cold, actually, which is intentional. Mmm. Yep. It's tasty and would be even better cut into slivers and served with a sauce of some sort. Honestly, I prefer straight up sashimi, but if you're squeamish about completely raw fish, this is a good way to go. Salmon on a stick. So our campfire here is nice and hot. We've got a piece of salmon that we've wedged into this split stick, and we're just gonna hold this here, turning it every once in a while so that the smoke and the heat can just gradually cook our fish. This is gonna take a while. Well, that looks done to me. Mm, definitely smells smoky. Yeah, it's pretty unevenly cooked because of the way that certain parts were insulated by the wood. Mm. Outside's a bit dried out, inside's pretty undercooked, but the flavor is really nice. Buried salmon? I dug a pit here earlier, and then I lined it with rocks and built- I a randomly dug a pit! Burning for the last few hours. <laughs> now that it's nice and hot, we're gonna put this foil-wrapped salmon filet in there, bury the whole thing, and dig it up again in a few hours. All right, should be ready by now. Ugh. Buried treasure. Maybe. Ooh, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to not get the dirt in there, because- All right, so we got some dirt. Uh, cutting in. Uh, it's actually cooked through. Mm, it's actually pretty tasty, but also this method isn't adding any unique flavor or texture, so it's kind of a whole lot of work for not that much payoff. I'm gonna pass on this one. Mailbox salmon. This huh? mailbox has been preheating in the sun all oh, day. No. It's pretty hot. We're gonna pop no. our foil wrapped salmon into this envelope, put it into our mailbox, and check back in in a few hours. Let's unwrap this thing. Yeah, that is not cooked. It's warm in kind of a clammy handshake sort of way. The inside is totally raw. Maybe if this were August in Texas, but this didn't do anything. I'm not gonna eat this. It's basically been sitting in the danger zone all afternoon. Hard pass. Hot tub salmon. <laughs> Battle five. Yeah, this salmon doesn't feel that hot. Our janky hot tub was supposed to get up to 104 degrees, but I'm not sure it got there. It probably would have to come up to a temperature that would actually injure me in order to cook the salmon, and that didn't happen. Yep, that is raw. Mm. Yep, raw salmon. But it was nice to take a bath at least. I don't smell like fish anymore. You know, I'm ready to head back inside. Slow-baked salmon. 
All right, we've got our salmon. There's a little bit of salt and oil on it, and we're gonna pop it into this 275 degree oven for about 16 to 18 minutes. Done and done. The thing that I love about salmon cooked this way is the way that it just kind of flakes like that. It's so soft I think and oven silky. is the best. Mm. So clean, so easy. I this do like the crisp of pan fry, but salmon. I think oven is like whole lot to look at, the most but it's consistent texture. Up. Roasted salmon. This time, we've increased the temperature to Final 400 three. degrees and we're decreasing Final the time three. to five to six minutes. All right, in it goes. And there's your roasted salmon. So even with that temperature increase, it still looks very similar to our slow-baked fish. The skin is flabby. We can kind of just scrape that off. You know, it's nicely cooked, but more uneven than our slow-baked. More cooked on the outside, more rare on the inside. Hmm, it's very tasty, but not quite as silky as our lower temperature fish. Broiled salmon. We're gonna increase our oven temperature one more time. We've got our salted and oiled salmon skin side up, and we're gonna pop it under the broiler for a few minutes and see what comes out on the other side. All right, that looks done to me. With the broiler, we had really direct heat from up top, but it wasn't enough to really crisp that okay, skin. Final it's cake more pop. Tough than crispy. Get ready. Inside, final one. It's pretty uneven. Mm, it's fine, but really not offering all that much. It's not better than our slow baked, nor is it as crispy as our pan seared. Not a great one. Salmon on papillote. So we wrapped this filet in parchment paper. We're gonna slide this into a 450 degree oven for about seven to eight minutes so it can steam in that little package. And it's puffed up, I think it should be done. You know, it looks a lot like our steamed salmon. We're done. The flesh is flaky and coming Finally. apart nicely. Mm. I mean, it's Ooh. not not good, but this method would be way better if we had some aromatics in there, some Dude, lemon that took slices, nearly an hour and a half just to wine, package, oh my God. That would have really upped the ante. Salt crusted salmon. So we've coated this salmon in a mixture of whipped egg white and kosher okay. salt. And we're gonna bake this at 450 degrees until that crust hardens and the inside cooks. All right, that looks oh, the like video's also, let, let's finish okay, the video so and then we'll do the crust here, recap. Finding the, yeah, it, it should ask for like payment. I mean, she pays my rent, so I think that's about. good enough. The inside is tender, <laughs> a hair overcooked. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's- Dude, I'm so salty, hungry, everything looks so dry. good. This salt crust has a theatrical element to it, but it's all show and no go. All right, today we cooked a whole right. lot of salmon a whole lot of different ways. What did we learn? Well, for one, when you're working with high quality fish, you don't need to mess with it too much or even at all to make it delicious. Oven is pretty salmon solid. is a really forgiving and versatile fish. And most of our favorite ways to cook it were as simple and straightforward as they come. Have a favorite way to cook salmon that you didn't see today? Drop it in the comments. Nice. Okay, so that concludes day two of cake pops. I made, we started off today with, wait, we started off today with 119. I, I busted two, 117. Let's go, Once, wait, 17, my lucky number. Holy, let's get some close-ups of the finals. Okay, bye, Lemon. Over 10 hours. We have 117 cake pops. I think that's gonna be a new world worker, new PB. Okay, I'm gonna put these in the fridge. Um, stream's not over yet because we did have somebody cheer a bit, so we get to do calligraphy. If you use your channel points or donate to the channel, you can have your name written. Wowie. Looks good, thank you, thank you. Holy, I'm tired. I was hoping to get this done in three hours. I was hoping and praying. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna put these in the fridge. Okay, this is our last name of the day. If you have a your name, all you gotta do is use your channel points or donate to the channel. Last call. So while everybody is waiting, um, look at the pinned message in chat, or click the link, and fill out the survey. We are doing a naughty or nice stream on Friday. So make sure you're ready. Fill out that survey. It takes less than five minutes.
Okay. Okay. I would like to thank. Oh, I can take the mask off now because I'm not prepping. I would like to thank everybody for watching. If you chatted, lurked. Once again, thank you, Titans, for donating today. I'm tired. I went for two hours longer than I thought this would take. Oopsie. Anyway, I will be live again tomorrow. Tomorrow? Holy. gonna be decorating 36 cookies oh my god I'm crazy I'm actually insane so if you want some nice visual ASMR tune in tomorrow you should start by 11 hopefully um but yeah um like I said yesterday plan for the sweet cookies tomorrow Nadia and I stream on Friday and then Santa watch on Saturday for Christmas Eve so make sure if you haven't already fill out that serve way Fill out the survey, pinned message in chat. If you don't fill it out, you're automatically a bad chatter, so. I don't know. Um. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> I am very tired. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow. Last thing. Make sure all of you are following my Twitter. You get updates about stream and then funny haha tweets sometimes. Okay, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Holy. I'm gonna have tinnitus for sure. <laughs> no, not tinnitus. Carpool tunnel. That's it. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, peace and biggest fan. <laughs> Your username is so good. <laughs> Okay, bye guys, bye. Bye, potato.